able to beat Miami at the Orange Bowl. Since then, a remarkable 57 consecutive hurricane wins at home, the last 31 under the direction of Dennis Erickson. Senior quarterback Frank Costa is back in the saddle and hopes to lead the Canes back into the national championship picture. Georgia Southern returns to the Orange Bowl, but for quarterback Joe Dupree and the rest of his Eagles, this could be mission impossible. The fired up Hurricanes seek another spot in college football history. The 94 season begins next on Sunshine. Sunshine Network proudly presents University of Miami Hurricanes football. The start of what promises to be an historic day at Miami's Orange Bowl. The Hurricanes begin the 94 season looking to extend their unbeaten streak at home to a ninth year and an NCAA record 58th straight win. It's the season opener as sixth ranked Miami takes on the Eagles of Georgia Southern. And hello again, everybody. Nice to be back with you. Eric Reed working again with former Dolphin great Nat Moore. And today the Hurricanes have a chance to do something great. Establish an NCAA record, Nat, that might never be broken. 57 wins in a row at the Orange Bowl. Truly an incredible feat. When you win 57 games in a row at home, it's because you've got three things going for you. You've got great players, great coaching, and tenacious fans that come in and intimidate your opponent. Five classes have come and gone without a setback here at home. We talk with the Hurricanes head coach, Dennis Erickson, about the streak. Winning 58 in a row is, is an unbelievable feat. And you got to look back at all the great players that played it in the Orange Bowl since 1985. And, and to break that record, uh, hopefully against Georgia Southern, will be a milestone that uh, nobody can ever forget. Well, the Hurricanes looking to forget the 9-3 and three season of a year ago, and they start off fresh today. They go back with quarterback Frank Costa, who had a turbulent season a year ago, lost his starting job after the Florida State loss, won it back in spring practice, and that he gets a second chance to get it right. Young man that showed a lot of character after losing his job, went back this spring and rededicated himself, worked real hard to correct the mistakes, and has won the starting job today. And for the Hurricanes to be successful this year, he must play well. Dennis Erickson does have an able role lever in his bullpen and he says he will use Ryan Collins this year. Collins started seven games a year ago. Newsflash, this is not a quarterback controversy, but this is a young man that Coach Erickson has confidence in. He's got a good arm. He has the ability to get out of the pocket if the if the blocking breaks down, but more so than anything else, he's the type of second-string quarterback that every program would love to have. And it was the Georgia Southern game last year when Collins came off the bench and electrified the Orange Bowl, going six for eight with two touchdown passes. And the Hurricane defense should be better this year, and the best player on that unit, big bad Warren Sapp. He's a dominator for my money the best defensive football player in the country he's big strong fast and quick and he goes 125 miles an hour every play he's the guy that will be the next great defensive tackle in hurricane history well we saw georgia southern last year when they visited the orange bowl tim stowers eagles should be in the national championship hunt in division one double a and they come back with their same quarterback option oriented joe dupree but they tell us this man has improved his ability to throw yeah, he worked all spring on throwing the football. They know that to get back to the championship game, they've got to be able to throw the football. But the key to the Eagles' offense is his ability to read the option, when to give it to the fullback, when to pull it out and pitch it. Georgia Southern feels they have a big playmaker in number 85, split end Dexter Dawson. They'd like to get his hands on the ball more often. Well, he's a game breaker, and he's the guy that they feel can open up their offense. You know, when you, when you run that option, you start getting eight-man fronts, and you've got to have wide receivers that will make big plays and make the defensive secondary play on us. It is a hot afternoon here at Miami's Orange Bowl. Even hotter down on the field. And that's where the third man on our crew is standing by. Let's go down to Joe Rose. Thank you very much, Eric. You're right about that. It's a very warm day here at the Orange Bowl. I saw something I haven't seen in a long time ago, about 15 minutes ago. Dennis Erickson running around to the crowd with his team, jumping up and down, getting them in the crowd. Talking to him earlier in the week, he said it's important that this team get off to a great and emotional start. First game at the Orange Bowl, and of course, number 58. Coach Stowers on the other side, as we talked to him earlier, he said, Joe, it's a 16-7 game last year, late in the third quarter. We believe we have a chance to win if we can stay close in the fourth quarter, and we know it's going to be a warm one. We've worked hard to overcome that heat that we're going to take on today at the Orange Bowl. That's the story down here. Back up to you, Eric. 
Thank you, Joe. The temperature is rising. The 94 season about to get underway for Miami and Georgia Southern next. win over Cincinnati. It continues today, September 3rd, 1994. And a good crowd on hand. Opening day for sixth-ranked Miami against Division I AA power Georgia Southern. 86 degrees at game time. Humidity at 75%. Well, you're looking at Eric Smith. He handles the kickoff chores for Georgia Southern. He's a senior from Athens, Georgia. And I'll be kicking it to a pair of dangerous return men. Jamie German to your left, number seven, and Al Shipman, the quickest hurricane, number 32. This will be German from the two yard line. German. Georgia Southern Territory and brought down at the 35-yard line. The electrifying sophomore, Jamie German. Well, there's a penalty marker down in Georgia Southern Territory at the 44. At a return of 63 yards for Jamie German. Eric, and it will stand. Well, Eric, this is what the uh, Hurricane fans have been waiting for, is to see Jamie German break out of that mole. He was injured quite a bit last year, but there the young man showed you why he was so highly touted coming out of high school. As we look back at the replay, you'll see him as he starts right, reads the blocking wheel real well, and then he cuts back to his left. And, you know, that's what great athletes, you don't coach that. That's just inherited, the ability to find that open area and, and run with the football. Great run by Jamie German. Canes haven't returned the kickoff for a touchdown since 1980. German almost did it on the first play of the new season. Here's Frank Costa calling signals on first and 10 at the Georgia Southern 35. James Stewart breaks a tackle, reaches up to the 31. And that's a pickup of four yards for Stewart. Stewart, the junior out of Vero Beach, Florida. There's the senior quarterback from Philadelphia, Frank Costa, making just the sixth start of his Miami career. And he's got a running game he can rely on that. Well, that's where the Hurricanes want to improve this year, being able to run the football. Well, the Hurricanes come out on second and six. Three receivers to the right for Costa. Stewart again, first down yardage and more. James Stewart ripping away. Touchdown, Miami. Great run by James Stewart as you see him step through tackles. He must have broke four tackles in that run. And that's what the Hurricanes are looking for. They're putting a big play back in their offense. They've got six points. And it's been two big plays. 64-yard kickoff return to start it by Jamie German. And the 31-yard rumble for James Stewart. Well, the junior from Vero Beach packs 245 pounds, but he can motor. He can run. He's got great speed. He's big and strong. And you got to give the offensive line a lot of credit because he came through there wide open and had plenty of room to run. Dane Pruitt's extra point right there. They took Miami just 61 seconds with their first score on the board. 7-0 Hurricanes. Just a minute into the 94 season, we've already seen two reasons why Miami could be a better team this year. Special teams play and a running game led by James Stewart, who just went 31 yards for a score. This is just great blocking the point of attack. And then here you see where James Stewart is special. You see him step through two tackles, then he breaks a third tackle and gets into the end zone. And this is what the Hurricanes have been looking for, a back that can do a lot on his own. And, uh, you know, they've got to be excited. Coach Greg Smith has got to be happy to see the offensive line coming off the ball this way. 
James Stewart making his first career start. You might remember he was the backup to Donnell Bennett a year ago. Bennett now a rookie with the NFL's Kansas City Chiefs. This hurricane team loaded with talented running backs, Nat Moore. Well, he was the backup last year, but he was also still the leading rusher, you know, because Coach Erickson really feels that this kid has a uh, NFL caliber talent, and he just want to get him on the field as much as possible this year. Stewart had five touchdown runs a year ago, has his first of the season already. Dane Pruitt. The junior from Birmingham, Alabama, set to kick it off. Dexter Dawson and Chris Wright win safety return formation. This takes Wright to the corner, makes the catch at the three, and stumbles out of bounds at the eight. So Georgia Southern backed up deep in their own territory to start their first drive today. Chris Wright, a senior out of Valdosta, Georgia, he had a big game against Miami last year. And there's Joe Dupre, who did not play well against the Hurricanes a year ago. Not just one for six throwing for 45 yards, 14 rushes. He lost 18 yards. Well, he completed uh, less than a third of his passes last year, and that's why he worked so hard in the offseason to improve that, because he's got to be able to open up the defense so that they can get that option going. Well, Dupre at quarterback his second year as the Georgia Southern starter. He has fullback Tyrone Stevens packed behind him. And Dupree going to keep it and not get anywhere. Malcolm Pearson, the strong safety, took the helmet of Dupree right off. And that is a loss of five yards on first down. You know, Miami's had so much success against option teams because they've got guys that can run. They're all quick and fast. And when you've got a front four that can create havoc at that offensive line, it makes it easy for the linebackers to run and make tackles. Your starting lineup's brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. When you're thirsty, it's got to be Gatorade. Dexter Dawson, the big play threat. And Franklin Stevens of Kodak All-American, their starting center. Second down, about 15 to go for Georgia Southern. Their first drive, their own three-yard line. And not much room there for Tyrone Stevens. Owen Francis, the outside linebacker, with an assist from middle linebacker Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, a sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida. He emerged last year as a true freshman. He's the starting inside linebacker for Miami this year. Here, here you see that great defensive play by Ray Lewis as he reads the, reads the block and just comes up and fills the hole. And you know, that's why this defense is so good. You know, they've got linebackers that read well and run well. Third down, 13 for Georgia Southern now as you look at the rangy Ray Lewis. C.J. Richardson running the tailback out of bounds. Just a pickup of one, Georgia Southern will punt. It's got to be great to have a, have a defense that you're coaching with a linebacker to run sideline to sideline and make tackles the way Ray Lewis does. And we remember Ray Lewis well. He filled in for Robert Bass a year ago in the Virginia Tech game, came off the bench, made 12 tackles. A week later in his first start at Colorado, came up with 17 stops. This is Eric Smith, the punter. Nine yards deep in his end zone. He will send it to Jamie German waiting at midfield. And this ball down by Francis Williams at the Miami 48-yard line. A punt of 46 yards, no return. 11 minutes, 50 seconds left in the first quarter. Frank Costa and Miami out in front, seven to nothing. University of Miami would like to salute today's team. There's Dennis Erickson. He begins his sixth year as the head coach of Miami. Best record among all major college football coaches in the last five years. He's gone 53 and seven with a pair of national championships. And setback is Stewart. Jonathan Harris, the man in motion. Georgia Southern Territory to the 44-yard line. Brought down by the strong safety, number 27, Eric Thickpen. Eric, this is very impressive to see the Hurricanes just come out and, and dedicate themselves to running the football. You know, we're so used to seeing the Hurricanes put the ball in the air and to see the offensive line come off the ball and, and watch the backs run with reckless abandon is just fantastic. Here are your Gatorade lineups. Costa calling the signals. Right now, the tight end is Derek Harris, converted fullback. 
Casey Jones, the mainstay at center on that offensive front. Second and four. This time Stewart stopped after a pickup of just two. Danny Britt, number 11, the weak side linebacker. First man to get there, along with number 57, Charlie Burke. The pickup of two. That'll make it third down and two for Miami. Third down. And so far, we have not seen a Miami pass. <laughs> That's different. That's very different. We're so used to seeing the ball in the air and watching the receivers make all these great plays that uh, you know, I'm impressed just to see the offensive line block the way they are today. There's a look at the Georgia Southern defense. Third and short. Again, Stewart, the lone setback. A block from German. Allows Stewart to turn the corner, pick up the first down. Out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 30. A pickup of 12, but a penalty marker down at the 41. Stewart went out of bounds by Big Ten. This one likely to come back. Holding, offense, repeat second down. That's Tom Thamer, a Big East referee and the crew chief today. Holding call against Miami. So it'll be third down and 11. Let's go. Let's go back and look at this player here. So you see Stewart going out to the left. As you can see, there's a little hole there. But I'll tell you, the great part about it, you see even Jamie German out there. And I, they might have called it on Jamie. But it's good to see the, the receivers blocking downfield. That's where you get three-yard gains turning into 20-yard gains. At third and 11, we may finally see Costa's first throw of the day. Gets up. And fires incomplete. Intended for Derek Harris and broken up on the middle linebacker Paul Carroll. Carroll, the star of the Georgia Southern defense. Well, Eric, even though that ball was incomplete, uh, you saw a little bit more poise by Frank Costa there where he stepped up, avoided the rush, and didn't just throw the ball up for grabs. I think that's a good decision by Frank Costa, even though they weren't able to complete the pass. Hurricane scored on their first possession, a 31-yard touchdown gallop by James Stewart. Mike Chrissy will punt it away here on the second possession. Chrissy, a junior from Fort Lauderdale. Average just under. Oh, terrible snap from center. And over the head of Chrissy. And he will get it away. Well, averting a disaster as it bounces back and is down at the 44-yard line. A special team's mistake. The snapper, Tremaine Mack, fired it well over the head of Mike Chrissy. The Georgia Southern gets a break with 10 minutes to play in the first quarter. The Eagles will take over first and 10 at the Miami 44. Well, this is a big break. You've got a young man, uh, first year snapper, and he just a little snap over the punter's head. But Chrissy does a good job of going back, picking up the ball and still getting the kickoff to lessen the loss. Dupree to throw. Incomplete, intended for the split end Alfonso Harris and covered well by Chad Wilson. So Alfonso Harris got open on that play and Joe Dupree did a good job of getting the ball off, but you know that guy that we talked about starting the telecast, Warren Sapp was in his face and had him on his back. You know, otherwise it might have been a touchdown because the ball was a little behind uh, Harris on the throw. Well, Joe Dupree last year completed just 32% of his throws, six touchdowns, five interceptions. Tim Stowers says, we must improve our short passing game. Dupree flips it back on the option of Chris Wright, and this guy has some giddy up and go to him. He gets out of bounds at the Miami 36-yard line. That's a pickup of nearly eight, but a penalty marker down over on that right sideline. And this one against Georgia Southern. But Chris Wright, who had a good game last year in Miami, shows you some speed to turn the corner. Well, he, he's the speed guy. He's the guy that uh, has the 4-5 speed. And they want to get him outside with his hands in the football, but they've got to be able to make that uh, hurricane defense stay at home so they can get him outside. Here's the likable Tim Stowers in his fifth year as the coach of the Eagles of Georgia Southern. He's a 1980 graduate of Auburn. And like Dennis Erickson, 
won a national championship in his first year as a head coach with Georgia Southern. Very likable guy. He's got all the sayings. He's a lot of fun to be around. And you know, I, I look at the young kids that play for him. It's just, it must be a joy because the guy's just such a likable individual. Well, they're the pride and joy of Statesboro, Georgia. Dennis Erickson, happy with the first drive, not happy with a special team's mistake. Third down, 18 for the Eagles. Dupree tried the quarterback draw, and he was buried back at the 41-yard line. The two defensive tackles, Patrick Riley, Warren Sapp, along with James Burgess, burying Dupree, a loss of seven. You're talking about two, two defensive tackles that both have speed and quickness, and you know, as soon as the ball is snapped, they're beating that offensive line and getting into the backfield. As you can see here, you'll see both defensive back tackles come free, and Dupree has nowhere to go with the football. Well, Pat Riley at 293 pounds, Warren Sapp at 285, menacing defensive tackles. Smith's punt, fair catch signaled and made by Jamie German at the Miami 15-yard line. Punt of 43 yards for Georgia Southern's Eric Smith. 7-0 Miami. We'll be right back after this from Coors Light. Reach for Coors Light, the silver bullet, and keep on moving. West Conference football hits the field Saturday live on Sunshine. As we go back and take a look at the big sack here, you'll see Warren Sapp coming off, but as you look closely in your picture, you'll see number 43, Patrick Riley, is the guy that gets there first, and then here comes a whole host of Hurricane defenders. Hurricanes expecting huge things out of big number 43 and the Sugar Bear, number 76, Warren Sapp. Well, so far for the Eagles of Georgia Southern, no first downs and minus one yard in the rushing department. 56 to play in the first quarter with Nat Moore and Joe Rose. Eric Reed, delighted to have you with us for the hurricane season opener. Seven zip Miami, they have it their own 15 yard line. And Larry Jones into the game. Costa, the fire. And incomplete. And out of the hands of Jonathan Harris. He was covered by the strong safety Eric Thickpen and the middle linebacker Paul Carroll. Low play action there with uh, Costa trying to hit Jonathan Harris on a turnout. The ball was there. It should have been caught. The ball hit him in the hands. You know, Jonathan Harris has to make those kind of catches to help this uh, offense get started. Frank Costa last year threw for over 200 yards in each of his first three starts. Went downhill from there. 0 for 2 so far today for Costa. This is Trent Jones in motion. And the pitch to Larry Jones. Turns it up to the 20 yard line. A gain of four of a fifth year senior out of Gainesville. Gains four yards. That'll bring up a third down and six for the Hurricanes. Tony Gator checking into the game. Here you see number 22, the sprinter out of Miami's Killian High School off his junior college stint at San Bernardino, and they expect some big plays out of number 22. Young man with a lot of quickness and the ability to get the football in the end zone in a hurry. German flanked to the left. Gator and Chris Jones to the right. Frank Costa with time. Fires an incomplete intended for Tony Gator. And so far, the coverage has been solid for Georgia Southern. Costa 0 for 3, and the Hurricanes have to punt again. Well, Georgia Southern is playing good defense. They're staying at home. They're playing strictly zone. Sometimes they're playing a double zone where the corners are rolling up and the safeties are getting back uh, deep half. But uh, Costa is putting the ball on the money. This throw here was a little errant, though. I, I think it could have been picked off. Uh, Tony Gaither really pays the price there. That's when you go back to the quarterback and say, please don't do that again. Mike Chrissy handles the snap, spirals it high for Dexter Dawson. Oh, loots a man at the 45. A couple of penalty markers fly. Dexter Dawson led the Southern Conference in punting a year ago. Showed some darting ability there, a 36-yard boot, a four-yard return for Dawson. There are flags. 7.51 to go. Quarter one, Miami seven, Georgia Southern nothing. Another infraction on the Eagles. 
I think we got a little push in the back. Here you see Tremaine Mack going down. He's pushed in the back by number 31. That's Chad Holmes. Ten-yard penalty. But the, the best part about that, we got to see Dawson and, and his ability to run with the football if he gets a crack. Well, Dexter Dawson, the long score man for Georgia Southern, had touchdown grabs of 74 and 58 yards a year ago. Odd thing was he caught just 13 balls during the regular season and erupted for a six-catch day in the second round of the playoffs against eventual 1AA champion Youngstown State. Reed Lewis ripping through the offensive line and roping down Joe Dupree back at the 25-yard line. A loss of eight, hard to stop Raymond Lewis. Good call by the defensive coordinator. He had Ray Lewis coming on a blitz, and he just had to hit the hole right as the ball was snapped, and the quarterback Dupree never saw him coming. Ray Lewis making his fourth career start. That's a perfect good timing on a blitz. As you see, Dupree never sees him. He wants to reverse his field, and Ray Lewis is in his face coming up with the sack. Second and 17. Dupree Keats gets to the line of scrimmage no more, and it looked to be a motion penalty on Georgia Southern. Dupree was stopped by Kenny Holmes. Kenny Holmes, number 90, the right side defensive end, and it's an offsides call against the Hurricanes. Offsides, defense, five-yard penalty, 18 second down. So that'll make it second down and 12 for Georgia Southern. The Eagles went 10 and three last year. They won the Southern Conference. First time they were in the league and they won it. But that did not please their coach, Tim Stowers. He said winning the Southern Conference title was like taking a shower with a raincoat on. He says, we need to win the national championship. And that type of talk sounds familiar here in Miami. Tyrone Stevens, the fullback, just a yard or two. That'll make it third and about 10. Brought down by Marley and Riley. So it'll be third, a little less than 10, with 6.40 remaining in this first quarter. Tristan Belser split wide to the right. Dawson to the sideline left. Stevens, the lone setback. This is Marlo Wortham. He turns the corner, keeps his feet, gets to the 40-yard line. Pick up of about seven yards, but it will come up about three yards shy of the first down. Worthen showed great ability there and agility as he leaped over the would-be tackler and was almost able to keep his feet for the first down. Marlo Worthen, a junior out of Warrington, Georgia, starting in the place today of the injured Shafton Fraley. Here you see Rusty Medeiros, uh, who's great to see him back on the field, uh, getting out in pursuit and basically uh, was the guy that got the tackle there. Medeiros coming back from what everyone thought was a career-ending knee injury two years ago. An inspirational comeback for Medeiros. Third punt today for Eric Smith. German on the pickup. And he gets it up to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. Eric, even though Jamie German dropped that ball there, you know, I like this kid because once he dropped the football, that the average player will panic. He took his time, picked it up, and was able to make something positive out of it regardless. 45-yard punt, five-yard return. Jamie German. Nobody saw the true Jamie German a year ago, the injury plague freshman campaign. But the young man from Fort Myers, Florida, about to emerge. 64-yard kickoff return to start the game. Larry Jones, still the fullback. Jones sliding up to the 30-yard line. Getting a hand in there was the defensive tackle, Brian Sellers. That's pickup of five yards. A little draw action by the Hurricanes. You know, they're noted for throwing the football, and you know, Coach Erickson said going into the season, he wanted to run the football, and you know, to have the draw as a part of that run package is good. Second and five for Frank Costa. Still searching for his first completion. This is Jones. He keeps his feet. 
Larry Jones. And finally brought down by Matt Thornton with an assist from Scott Davis at the 34. That's pickup of four. It'll make it third down and two. Actually, third and just one for Miami. Here you see Larry Jones as he's getting hit. But the thing that he does, he keeps his feet, puts his hand down, and keeps his balance and picks up an extra two yards. And, you know, that's what you look for in good backs. Bounced off the strong safety. We take hit. a good shot there. That's a good shot on him, but his awareness put his hands down to keep his feet moving. Picks up an extra two yards. Third down, a yard to go for Miami. James Stewart, he turns the corner, gets close to the first down. He's got the first down. I'm going to go out on a limb this time and say he has it, Eric. Eric Thickpen and Rob Stockton with safeties coming up hard to pin Stewart for a short gain. And it is a first down, so net more, one for one. That was easy. <laughs> I tell you, when you see the ball in James Stewart's hand, you know that there's not going to be one guy that's going to bring him down, especially when he only needs a yard. Well, James Stewart's world, it's hit or be hit. He can run around you, but he just as well run right over you. On first down, Tony Gator, the man in motion. Costa, wide open. Chris Jones. Check it, that's Taj Johnson, who lost his footing or he would have been in for the touchdown. That was just a great throw and catch by both Frank Costa and Taj Johnson. It was just too bad the kid was not able to keep his feet, but you know, let's let's give it credit to Frank because he put the ball on the money. First catch in the career of Taj Johnson, the redshirt freshman from Ardmore, Oklahoma. He could have had six. Instead, he settles for a 46-yard reception. Well, they expect a lot of big plays out of this kid because he's tall, rangy, and he has great speed. And as you can see, Frank does a good job of stepping up, throwing the football. Fingertip oh. catch by Johnson there. And he starts to run. He just loses his balance. Costa's throw was right on the money. Stewart turns the corner, rumbles inside the 10. Close to the nine-yard line. Pickup of over seven yards for Stewart, who is already over 50 yards rushing in this first quarter. You know, if we could take a look back at that play, you're starting to see James and his awareness of running the football now. He's just not running out there. He's setting up his blocks. He's bouncing in and then get, setting up the block and getting back outside, picking up extra yardage. Here's another, here's another angle of the throw to Todd Johnson. As you can see, he does a good job of catching the ball in his hands, and just as he starts to stride out, he loses his balance and falls. Second, a short two for Miami, knocking at the Georgia Southern door. That only markers go down, the snap clock elapsed. Dead ball, legal procedure, offense. Second illegal second procedure on Miami. That'll make it second and seven for Frank Costa. Now Costa said earlier this week, I've got a score to settle with Georgia Southern. He also said, I looked at the films of the Georgia Southern game from last year, and it turned my stomach. Well, it was a rough game for him last year, but uh, as we look at the penalties, and I'll get back to that, you know, Miami has a tendency of stopping themselves with penalties, and you know, they can't afford to do that against good football teams. Jonathan Harris, the man in motion. Costa going to keep it. Inside the five to the four-yard line. Bit of running for a man not noted for his quick feet. Eric, I like what I see of Frank Costa today. He's not throwing the ball up for grabs. He's coming out of the pocket when he has. He's making good decisions, and that's what you've got to have from your quarterback. Frank Costa picking up 10 yards. And that makes it first and goal for Miami. Games leading at 7 0, 318 remaining first quarter. On a warm afternoon here at the Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes looking for win number 58 in a row here. Larry Jones into the end zone. Touchdown Miami. Two 
rushing touchdowns for the Hurricanes. Two it's rushing. Stewart going 31 yards and Larry Jones taking it over from five. Just a good job of blocking by that offensive line. Let's give Casey Jones and Allen Simonet a big, big uh, pat on the back for that play because they opened up the hole and Jones was able to cut it back behind their blocks. And through its extra point through there. And with three minutes to play in the first quarter, it's the Hurricanes 14 and Georgia Southern nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to make the Two first quarter touchdowns for sixth ranked Miami. That last drive covering 74 yards. 46 of them, the completion from Costa to Taj Johnson. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Thank you, Eric. First of all, let's just say this. In the offseason, it was important for University of Miami to pick up more speed at the wide receiver position. They've done that. Reason being, they felt last year they became too many possession type of receivers, situations. They want to get the long ball back in. It looks like early we've gotten it. A along with a running game that they've established here early today. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Joe. Joe Rose, former Miami Dolphin, flirted with a comeback this year. You're kidding. Uh, that's right. <laughs> so was he. <laughs> and the Hurricanes have looked sharp here in the first quarter. Two long touchdown drives and a defense that has kept Georgia Southern from picking up a single first down. This team, Dennis Erickson says, is the closest group I've had since I came to Miami. I think that the adversity of last year, losing three games, a 29-0 embarrassment in the Fiesta Bowl, Arizona, the adversity uh, doing good things for this year's team. Well, I think it's helping tremendously, but, uh, you know, anytime you go 9-3 and three and people consider that a disaster, you know, that's hard to believe, but if you've been around this hurricane program, you expect better, and, you know, they had to take a lot of heat this offseason, and they've worked hard in the spring to get ready for the season. We see the benefit of that today. And even Dennis Erickson said it. This is a big game. It's our first chance to erase the disappointment of a season ago. Chris Wright watches it bounce, picks it up on the sideline. And Wright advances to the 17-yard line. That's where the Eagles will take it with 2.56 to play in the first period. And by Chris Wright. Marley Hurricane defense with five, Pat Riley and Warren four, Sapp at the tackles. Kenny Holmes and the comeback man, Rusty Medeiros. Your defensive ends. Here's another look at that pass to Taj Johnson. Just a perfect throw. Taj Johnson does a good job of catching the football, but just as he starts to stride out, he loses his footing and falls. I think Taj will get some ribbing when the Hurricanes look back at the film. That could be a lateral pass. Marlo Worthen picking it up back at the eight-yard line. That pass thrown behind the line of scrimmage. That's a very dangerous pass, and uh, the receiver did a good job of getting on the football because, you know, the Hurricanes recovered. It's first down Hurricane. Loss of nine. Hurricanes changing one of their outside linebackers. Twan Russell, number 45, into the game. Earl Little in at a safety spot. Dennis Scott and Chad Wilson, the corners. Rohan Martley also in as an outside linebacker. Another no gain for Georgia Southern. Their option not getting anything done. Warren Sapp wrapping up Tyrone Stevens. Right there, Eric. That came uh, defense is so fired up. There's just nowhere to run with the football. You go back, you try to throw it, and there's nowhere to throw it. You try and run the option. There's nowhere to run with it. If you give it to the fullback going through, they've got that covered. Great Dennis defense. Hurricane defense. They'd like to be known as the goose egg gang. Dupree on third down. Flipping it back to Chris Wright. He gets to the corner, but will come up shy of the first down. Run out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Good pursuit by Ray Lewis and Pat Riley. And that will bring up the fourth punting situation today for Eric Smith of Georgia Southern. 12-yard game, but not good enough. They needed 18. A rough first quarter for Joe Dupree. Well, it's got to be tough trying to pick up 18 yards, running the option uh, sideline to sideline when you're going against the speed of the Hurricanes. 
Four tries for Georgia Southern. Still no first downs. Nice punt by Smith. This young man can boot the football. German with a spectacular catch there. Gets a nice block. And German gets it up to the 29-yard line. Lost the football. Georgia Southern has it. A 54-yard punt. And number nine, Derek Austin recovers the football. Jamie German got stuck and the ball popped free. I'm surprised that the ball wasn't blown dead. His pro forward progress was stopped and uh, the hit came in after he was stopped. You know, here we see a replay of him catching the ball. Does a good job of catching the ball over his shoulder. He gets the blocks coming back and here, you know, his progress is stopped. He stood up and he's actually down when they snatched the ball out. You know, it's just a bad call by the official. Scott Davis, number 55. Look at the hit on German. Yeah, here, here we see a great peel back there, but if you if you look at it real slow there, you'll see that he's all the way down. His progress has stopped, and now they snatched the ball out. And I just think the officials blew that call. And Jamie German is still down on the natural grass surface of the Orange Bowl. Last year, German with a preseason hamstring injury, a late season knee problem. He never really did get on track. He was so happy to go through the preseason this year without an injury. Now, last year, uh, the injuries really kept him from showing Miami what he can and cannot do. And, you know, he came in with such high expectations that, you know, this year is his golden opportunity. And, you know, he, he won the starting job during the spring. And, you know, so far today, he's, he's played exceptionally well, but, you know, you hate to see him get hurt again. Made a big play on the opening kickoff, taking it back 64 yards, setting up the 31-yard touchdown run by James Stewart, and uh, looks to be holding his hip as he comes limping off. But German goes out with a minute 17 left in the first quarter. Kane's leading 14-0, best field position of the afternoon for Georgia Southern. This is the break that the Eagles need. Let's see if they can get something going offensively here. Tonight. Miami beat Georgia Southern last year 30-7, but it was a 16-7 game late in the third quarter. Tyrone Stevens, two yards straight ahead. Kenny Holmes from behind. And Ray Lewis from in front, stopping big Mr. Stevens, who takes 230 pounds on that six-foot frame. He's out of Jessup, Georgia. The game is two. Second down and eight. Dennis Erickson's defense digging in second and eight for Georgia Southern at the Miami 28. This is Marlo Wortham. Nice lunge to get to the 25 yard line. Pick up of three more. I just don't think they can really get anything accomplished running sideline to sideline. The fullback has got to be able to make something happen. Otherwise, when you run your speed, guys, into the boundary, there's not a lot of room to turn the corner. Third down. The Eagles are 0 for 4 on third down. And face now with a third down and eight to go. At the Miami 28-yard line, Georgia transfer Joe Dupree. Calls his signals. This time he keeps it and is swung down by a middle linebacker who is like a weapon, Ray Lewis, a loss of two yards. Boy, he has amazing quickness to the carrier. Ray Lewis made the tackle here, but we need to give Kenny Holmes a big deal of credit for this here because he's the guy that forced Dupree to keep the football. Watch him as he gets up field, and he takes the pitch, man, and now Dupree has to keep the football, and Ray Lewis comes in with Holmes coming back to assist on the tackle. You're right. Excellent play by the sophomore Kenny Holmes out of Vero Beach. And the field goal attempt from Reed Haley. Bad snap. And Haley is brought down back at the Georgia Southern 35-yard line. Excellent special teams defense by Miami. Malcolm Pearson brought him down. And the Hurricanes take what could have been a three-point play for Reed Haley in an excellent field position for themselves. And that might very well have been. It is the final play of an impressive first quarter for Miami. 
through one period of play, Miami has gained 128 yards of offense. Georgia Southern, negative 31. That's, that's, that's just that great, tenacious defense of the Hurricane. You know, that, this looked like the Hurricane defense of old where they were coming after people. Last year, they had a lull. They, they weren't able to stop the run. People were able to run the football on them. But this year, they're fired up, and they're coming after Georgia Southern, and there's just no way Georgia Southern can execute that option play. Key for Miami in the first quarter, their rushing attack. 82 yards on the ground for Miami. And let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. That last punt return, Eric, was had the wind knocked out of him. He'll be back in the game. The big thing they're talking about right now down here, though, has been the swarming defense that everybody has seen. Warren Staff and Riley really lead a charge that's been unbelievable to this point. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks, Joe. Glad to hear that number seven, sleek Mr. Jamie German, is okay. First play of the second quarter. Costa and the Hurricanes go to work at the Georgia Southern 34. Again, James Stewart for big yards. The 23-yard line, a gain of 11 for Stewart. Stewart had the 31-yard touchdown run, first drive of the game. And Jamie German is back into the contest. James Stewart is just, you know, he's a guy that's showing me more and more how much he's grown in a year. His ability to elect the offensive line, do their job, and then pick his way through the blocking scheme. Seven carries, 67 yards already for Stewart, and he gets another try. And this time, no game. The cornerback number two, Francis Williams, up in run support, along with number 91, Michael Morris, the defensive end. Stewart is stopped by Michael Morris. Well, James Stewart gained over 100 Francis yards Williams. last year against Georgia One Southern, 19 out. carries for 104. Second down. In route to having a better outing today. I think if he keeps going to where he's going, he's going to have 104 at halftime. You know. <laughs> the offensive line is just doing a great job of creating holes for him to come through. Second and 11 for Miami. Number 22 is Tony Gator. Costa aims it for Gator, who makes the catch and is run right down at the 21-yard line. Marco Bradham, number 19. A cornerback from Savannah, Georgia, hanging close to Gator. Pick up of just a couple of yards. That'll bring up a third down and eight. Here you see Costa does a good job stepping up, throwing the football, but Marco Bradham does a good job of sitting back, reading the, reading the offensive play, and then coming up, making the tackle on Gator. Early moments, second quarter. Hurricanes in front, 14 to zip. <laughs> Penalty marker stops it. Penalty markers. Another one on Miami. The penalty is against the Hurricanes. For you know, watching the Hurricanes in early fall practice, Eric, they were having... ball, illegal procedure, offense lining up in the neutral zone, offense. They were having a lot of problems Third getting off the ball, getting off on the snap count uh, earlier during the year. And, you know, this first game, you know, they're going to have some problems, but this is the time to work out those kinks so that when they go into the next ball game, you know, they're ready, that they're not making the same mistakes. Next ball game for Dennis Erickson takes him west to Arizona State next Saturday. Hurricanes 0 for 3 on third down. That's a tough one, third and 13. Five receivers on the pattern for Costa. That one through the hands of Jonathan Harris at the 15-yard line. So the Hurricanes fail on four third down tries here in the first half. This will bring up a field goal try for Dane Pruitt, who connected on 10 of 14 three-point attempts a year ago. Here you see Costa does a good job of setting up and throwing the football. And true enough, he's a little disappointed because that's another ball that Jonathan Harris should have caught. But, you know, he can't show that kind of expression. He's got to go over there and tell Jonathan, it's okay, you're going to get the next one. You know, you got to keep confidence in each other. 42-yard attempt the legs but was wide to the right. Now Dane Pruitt's kick does not connect 
and we stay at Miami 14 and Georgia Southern nothing with 1247 left here in the second period. Supermarkets in South Florida. This year's campaign began September the 1st and will run through October the 13th. Proceeds from football fever, specially marked items are donated to the UM Athletic Scholarship. Yeah, great to have college football back here for you on Sunshine Network. Here's a look at your first quarter numbers. Negative 31 total yards for Georgia Southern. All you need to know about this one. And now penalty markers before Georgia Southern can snap their first play from scrimmage. Illegal procedure against the Eagles. Against the Eagles for illegal procedure. Well, Tim Stowers said he was happy to start the season at Miami with focus and concentration all through their preseason workouts. No pep talks necessary to get ready to take on the Hurricanes here at the Orange Bowl. Yeah, but senseless penalties like this, uh, the Eagles cannot afford. You know, they're not a team that throws the football well, and to start out first and 15 against this Hurricane defense is just tough. New fullback in is Roderick Russell. And yeah, not much doing up the middle. Chris Wright. Chris Wright to the 20 yard line, and that's all. They tried to run a little misdirection there, see if they can fool that hurricane uh, defense because they're so aggressive. See if they can get them pulling with the uh, with the lineman and coming back with uh, Chris Wright going the other way. As you can see, it looks like they're going to go to the left, and you got Chris Wright coming back on the right with a tackle trap, but it didn't fool that hurricane defense. Stripped over his own man. Here's Chris Wright on second and 17. And he was roped down again by Ray Lewis after a two-yard game. Ray Lewis and number 54, James Burgess, can cover the territory. But Lewis, a guy you just can't miss. He is all over the place now. He reminds me a lot of Jack Lambert, the way he just runs in that, again, in that 4 3 defense from sideline to sideline, and when he gets there, he delivers the blow. Number 52, a big timer for Miami, just a sophomore. Third and 13 for Georgia Southern, three minutes in, second quarter. The Eagles trail Miami by two touchdowns. Go to pre with time. Catch made by Alfonso Harris for the first down. Up to the Georgia Southern 45-yard line. That is a 23-yard pickup. And a good-looking strike from Dupree to Harris. Dupree and Harris did just a great job at living. They tried to go with a, a out and up, and Jones stayed at home, so they just stopped and, and gave him the underthrow, and they were able to complete the ball. Here you see the old underthrow for first down, but uh, they're calling it back. It's all for none. Georgia Southern sees their initial first down of the game rubbed out on the penalty. Illegal man downfield. Is that also their first completion? I believe so. Well, Tim Starry said he wanted this year's Eagle team to be more efficient throwing the football. They haven't been so far today. Third down and 18 now for Georgia Southern. They do figure to be in the national title mix in Division One AA. Youngstown State, the champion last year, tied in their season opener, 10-10 with Stephen F. Austin. Marshall also highly ranked. Dupree aiming it for Dexter Dawson on the right sideline, covered very well by C.J. Richardson and Chad Wilson. Another fourth down and long, another chance for Eric Smith to do his thing. That tells you how it's gone for Georgia Southern, Nat. Eric Smith, their punter, has been their best player today. He's been their best player, and he's been their most accurate player. Tony Gator back to return this punt. You see the numbers for Smith. 47 yards of boot. That only markers down as this ball rolls inside the 45. Illegal motion on Georgia Southern. Held the frequent flags flying, uh, evidence of a season opener. 
usually if you're going to get the mistakes, the, the, the dumb penalties, uh, it's normally in that Freedom first ball motion, game when you're trying to work out all the kinks, you're finally getting the penalty, chance to go head-to-head -head with competition rather than beating up on yourselves, and there's a lot of over-anxiousness. If we go back and uh, hopefully we got this in, in the replay, you'll see number 29, he, he starts, he falls down. He's trying to stop himself so that he's not offside, but uh, the officials caught him. That was Jonathan Richardson, number 29, who stumbled into the penalty. Well, Eric Smith will try it again from a couple of yards deep in his end zone. And only Gator settling under the spiral on the run, couldn't handle it. Georgia Southern is saying they have the free football. And they do. The second fumbled return for Miami. By Georgia Southern, number 19. Marco Branham with his second fumble recovery for Georgia Southern. That, that might be Georgia Southern's offense, but Tony Gator made the cardinal mistake here. You know, he's trying to catch this on the run with the ball slicing away from him. And as you can see here, he's looking up into the sun, and he just never got, got his hands on the football. He was never able to get to it. You know, that kind of play, you've just got to get there and fair catch it. And, and, now, if he'd have been able to catch that on the run, he might have had something going, but that's a very dangerous play, as we saw. First down for Georgia Southern, they're 44, and look out, Joe Dupree. Canard Lang busting through. A redshirt freshman from Orlando. His first play, a sack of Joe Dupree. And that a loss of eight yards. Now, the fumbles today on special teams might not be that costly for Miami against Georgia Southern, but bigger games down the road, those are mistakes you cannot have. Those are things that they've got to work out, and this is the time for it to happen as long as they've got that 14-point lead. As you get, a, get up against tougher competition, mistakes like that cost you ball games. Roderick Russell on the keep, and Russell dragging Corwin Francis across midfield to the Miami 47-yard line, but again, Penalty markers down. Good looking run for Roderick Russell, a redshirt freshman. And again, it's on Georgia Southern. Well, their offense has been painful to watch. Yeah, they're, they're sputtering. Every time they come up with a good play, a big play, they finally break the fullback loose. And, you know, once again, illegal they've got a legal procedure That's penalty. The offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty against the Eagles. Had a problem with the formation. They did, Second down. didn't have enough people. But Three. as you see, the first time that the fullback was able to come through there unmolested and uh, pick up big yardage. Hurricanes have substituted liberally on that defensive front. Do those subs, Booker Pickett, number 53, and number 93, Marvin Davis, in on the stop of Roderick Russell, short game. And that'll make it third down and about 20 yards to go for the first down. You just saw a trade of a good coaching, uh, coaching job. You see Coach Dyer and him come back with the same play, but uh, the Hurricanes would have none of that. Joe Dupree and Georgia Southern still looking for their first first down of the game. Under 940 left, second quarter, 14 to nothing, Miami. Joe Dupree on the keep to the 44-yard line. Game of nearly 10, but it will come up 10 yards shy of a Georgia Southern first down. Rohan Marley, a Butkus Award candidate as a linebacker in on the stop of Dupree. How about that? Marley is a Butkus Award candidate and not even a starter. That just goes to show you how much talent they have on this Hurricane football team. That uh, Marley's been relegated to second team, being he wasn't able to practice during the spring. And, you know, he's finding it tough getting his job back to James Burgess. Linebacker might be the deepest spot on the football team. Smith has had a good day. He gets a nice roll. Miami 10, where it's settled down and is stopped by Jonathan Richardson. A 46-yard punt, 8.44 left in the first half. Miami holding on by two touchdowns. A warm but pretty day here in 
Shaft, Florida, Miami, our location, the Orange Bowl more specifically, and the Hurricanes are zeroing in on an NCAA record 58th win in a row. And as the sun shines here in Miami, Florida, so does the Hurricane defense. They have held Georgia Southern to negative 24 yards of offense. Now the Canes take it over first and 10 at their own 10. Mike Costa with all the time he needs to send it to Chris Jones, but incomplete. And the rushing game has been more positive for Miami than their air attack so far in the first half. And it's also helped the air attack. As you can see, every time Costa goes back, he's got plenty of time to throw the football because the defense have to play the run first. This is going to help this offense tremendously throughout the year. Costa threw a perfect strike to Taj Johnson for 46 yards earlier. But the two touchdowns, both on running plays. 31 yards by James Stewart, a five-yard run for Larry Jones. Jones in the game now on second and ten. And here he comes. Larry Jones turns the corner, has the first down and more. And out of bounds by Marco Bradham at the 27-yard line. A collection of 17 for Larry Jones. Another big back that has great speed that can go through the middle, but he also has the ability that he can turn the corner. And once again, you see those back getting outside, receivers blocking and giving them the, the opportunity to get outside and try and go for the big one. You saw Jones' numbers from a year ago. He has 14 career touchdowns. Right. Here's just a basic, simple draw, but because the receiver's out front blocking, he's able to pick up an additional five or six yards. James Stewart back in the game. Jones sits down. Short drop for Costa, and Chris Jones drops the football. Well, that plagued the Miami receiving core a year ago, and it has not been a stellar first half for the pass catchers. They've let several go through their mitts. Yeah, they've they've, they've uh, put the ball on the ground quite a few times that should have been caught. Here's one that was a little bit behind Chris, but Chris should have came down with this football. You know, Jonathan Harris has dropped a couple that's been right in his hand, so you know it's not all Costa fault, but they've got to come together as a unit. It takes both guys doing their job, helping each other out. Here you see Costa getting the ball out, but it's just a little bit behind him, but that's a ball that should have been caught by Chris Jones. Second and 10, Taj Johnson, Trent Jones, and Jamie German all in the game as receivers. But Costa calls timeout. 8.01 left in the first half, still 14-0 Miami. <laughs> With Joe Rose, Nat Moore, and our Sunshine Network crew, Eric Reed welcoming you back to the Orange Bowl. Today, the Hurricanes looking to break the record set by Alabama with their 58th straight win at home. Georgia Southern, by the way, holds the Division I AA record for the longest home winning streak at 38 in a row, established in the mid-'80s. Second and 10, James Stewart weaving his way up to the 34-yard line. Another eight-yard gain for James Stewart, who is over the 70-yard mark here in the first half. Stewart has been a standout here in the season opener. Ricky Perry and Terrell Green and KC Jones, those guys are just doing such a good job of coming off the ball. When was the last time we've seen the Hurricanes with second and ten and you know, running the football for seven and eight yards to put themselves in a good third and short situation? Nine carries, 74 yards for Stewart. And a third and two here for Miami. Costa flips it complete to Stewart, who has the first down. Pushed out of bounds by Anthony Battle, number 45, but Stewart moves the chains for Miami. Good call by Dennis Harrison there. He, he sort of caught the Eagles in a blitz and was able to flare Stewart out and just pop the ball out and let him run for the first down. He's got a little blitz there, you see. Coming up the middle, Scott Davis. Stewart does a good job of looking the ball in his hands and getting a first down. Jamie German and Tony Gator to the left. Chris T. Jones to the top of your screen. Costa over the middle, caught by Jones. Down immediately at the Georgia Southern 42. Nice pitch and catch. Frank Costa to Chris Jones. That's what you've got to have there. That was not a great pass by Costa there, but you see Chris Jones go back and K. 
catch it, make a difficult catch as the ball's thrown behind him. And you know, that's what they've got to do for each other. You know, they've got to develop some confidence in each other as Frank goes back. Gets a lot of zip on the ball, and you see Chris make the acrobatic catch, reaching back over his shoulder, catching the football. 19-yard pickup and another first down for the Canes with under seven minutes to play in the first half. Stewart on the draw. James Stewart rumbling through the Georgia Southern defense. Gain of 12 down to the 30-yard line. He just goes and goes, and then he says, well, there's got to be somebody I can just run over, and then he finds a couple guys that runs right over. Here we go again, a little draw action. Goes back, and here he's him just picking his way, and at this point he says, well, I guess I'll run over a couple guys, Eric. He will thump you. 245 pounds with speed. Whiplash on the Georgia Southern defense. 10 carries, 86 yards for Stewart, who goes again. On first down, he cuts inside to the 24-yard line. So add six more yards to Stewart's total and give him 92 yards in 11 first-half carries. So it looks like the emphasis here at Miami, at least in the opener, gone from the passing game to this rushing attack. When you've got 300-pound tackles sitting outside, you've got 245-pound, uh, 235-pound fullbacks that can run with the football, you need to be able to get something on the ground. Offensive line doing a nice job for Miami here in the opener. Second and four. Hurricanes leading it 14 to nothing. Here's Larry Jones. A big hole for a first down. The 16-yard line, another gain of... Eight yards, and the Hurricane backs getting gaping holes to dart through. Gaping holes, but uh, I'll tell you what, I, I, I like to see these big guys with these little nifty feet as they just sidestep would-be tacklers and get that extra yardage. You know, Larry Jones just did a great job of making guys miss it, spinning around in the hole and picking up that first down. Here you, here you see the blitz coming. Oh. They read it, and watch this little pirouette there as he just makes a guy miss him. Pays the price later for spending, but uh, another first down for the Hurricanes. Great block by the right guard, 300-pound Tyrell Green, making his 25th consecutive start this afternoon. First down, James Stewart, touchdown! His second touchdown of the day, this one from 16 yards out. This touchdown, you must give credit to that offensive line. No one put a hand on him. Got to give that offensive line, Zeb Lemelski, Alan Simonette, Casey Jones, Tyrell Green, and Ricky Perry. They're just doing a, a number on that defensive line of the Eagles today. You ready to go out on the stand? Point after from Dane Pruitt. You've got the perfect view watching on Sunshine Network. Pruitt nails it. And the Hurricanes leading it 21-0, the ground game of Miami, carving up Georgia Southern here in the first half. Well, they're enjoying the afternoon so far at the Orange Bowl. Why shouldn't they? Hurricanes closing in on their 58th win in a row here at Miami. They got the winningest home streak ever, and they've done it impressively on the ground en route to this 21-0 first half lead. And that more, Miami has rolled up 11 first downs, Georgia Southern none. Well, this is why when you look at that offensive line, no one puts your hand on James Stewart here. I mean, this is a just great blocking at the point of attack, and that offensive line, which worked real hard this year to upgrade their blocking skills, and, and what a block. Jonathan there, Harris. Uh, Jonathan Harris, the smallest man on the football field with a crushing block. He took D.T. Tanner right out of the play. James Stewart, what a first half. 12 carries, 108 yards, two touchdowns. And we'll check it. But the 108 yards is James Stewart's career high. His previous best, a 107-yard day against Rutgers last year. Another game you saw right with us on Sunshine Network. This is Chris Wright from the five. Twan Russell knocks the football free. Miami recovers it. Kevin Brinkworth on the fumble recovery. Twan Russell popped it free. And the hurricane. 
Hurricane special teams come up with a turnover. The Hurricane special teams have been either great or bad. There's no in-between. Here you see Teron. Russell goes down, puts the big hit, shake the ball loose, and once again, it's first down Hurricanes as Brickworth comes up with the recovery. Brinkworth, special teams player out of Buffalo, New York. He's a junior and comes up with a big stick, actually with a big fumble recovery. This is just a good job by Teron Russell of just running through the blocker and shaking the ball loose. And look at the Hurricanes go for that fumble. And that we get our look. What a hit. Look at this hit here. This is perfect tackling. And Miami calls timeout. Hurricanes take a timeout after the turnover, and we will see a new quarterback when we return. Ryan Collins will come off the bench for Dennis Erickson with 514 remaining in the second quarter. Miami leading at 21 0. We'll see Collins and a new tailback, third one of the game, Daniel Ferguson, who I thought was the most improved player in fall camp for Miami, running straight ahead, hard and well. But Ryan Collins getting the call off the bench here in the first half. Well, that's just a perfect, perfect example of how well they've ran the football and how much. Uh, Coach Erickson is bringing in his second and third team players, giving them an opportunity to get, get their feet wet, but also giving those guys that have uh, improved themselves during the spring and during the fall an opportunity to get in and do something early in the football game. Now, usually you come in in the fourth quarter, it's mop-up. Well, this is not mop-up. This is quality time. But this is what Danielle Ferguson get a chance to show, show the coaching staff that it was not a fluke during spring and fall. I remember back to the Georgia Southern game last year, Nat, when Ryan Collins came off the bench with a hurricane struggling against the Eagles. He ignited Miami, going six for eight on the day in that second half. You see the last drive for the Hurricanes, 10 plays, 90 yards. We enjoyed the play of Collins last year. Interesting, Dennis Erickson saying he will play both and sticking to it as he comes with Collins here on first and 10. Here's Ferguson. He's right through the first hit, gets to the 10-yard line. Pick up the five for Danielle Ferguson, the sophomore from Miami. First chance to see Danielle Ferguson have to stick it in there versus trying to bounce it outside the way he did in high school. Did you see him running tough, running through the first would-be tackler and, and gaining some extra yardage there. Good positive first play, gaining four yards, which in second and medium. Larry Jones out with bruised ribs. We may see some more of Ferguson. Tellison to the top of your screen. Chris Jones to the bottom on second and six. It's Ferguson again. He slides to the five-yard line, maybe to the four. Close to the first down, under four and a half minutes left in the second quarter for the Hurricanes in front, 21 to nothing. You know what I like about the backs the, today is, and I'm seeing for the first time is they're showing a lot of patience. They're giving the offensive line a chance to make their block. They're staying with the hole, and then as a last result, bouncing it outside. Third and less than a yard for Miami. Two tight ends. Daphnis to the right, Harris to the left. And jumping off sides was Miami's left guard, Curlin Blaze, a redshirt freshman out of Orlando. Nat, your thoughts on Dennis Erickson playing both quarterbacks? Well, I, I think he wants to reward both quarterbacks for, for working hard, being being professional in, in this whole endeavor. They both had a good spring. Frank outright won the job back, but you know, there's no reason that he should play both quarterbacks. And if anything happens to Frank, he wants Ryan to be ready. Last year, Collins completed 59% of his throws, threw for 14 touchdowns, ran for five others. Third and six for the Hurricanes here at the Georgia Southern 11. Touchdown! Ryan Collins to Chris Jones! Just a good throwing catch by Chris Jones and Ryan Collins. It's just a little slant route where Jonathan Harris was the player controlling, pulled the inside backer and all the safety out of there, and Ryan Collins put the ball on the money. The sixth career touchdown catch for Jones, and Ryan Collins does it again. Comes in and electrifies the Orange Bowl with a touchdown strike. Pruitt for his fourth point after try of the first half. Perfect. 
46 left here in the second quarter. Ryan Collins into the game. He gets the Hurricanes on the scoreboard, and it's now 28 to nothing. Dennis Harrison is really blessed with the luxury of having two great quarterbacks that both could get the job done, and the team has confidence in both quarterbacks. Last year, uh, Ryan Collins came in and replaced Frank Costa, but as you have seen in the earlier part of the ball game, both guys have the capabilities of moving this football team, and both of them are making good decisions. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out through the year. The two quarterback scenario here at Miami, Frank Costa, the starter, and Ryan Collins, the able reliever. Here we see another good look at it as Ryan takes the drop, and puts the ball on the money, and, and, and look at Chris. He pops his head down on the football. You know, he didn't take it for granted. He made sure he looked it all the way in his hands. You know, that's what you've got to do. Sure catch. Ryan Collins, the six foot two junior out of Pembroke Pines, Florida. That's his 16th Miami touchdown throw. That's a great one-two punch to have with uh, Costa and then having uh, Ryan Collins come off the bench. So you know, they're going to be extremely strong and deep this year. And two very different types of quarterbacks, Collins, the more elusive player, a guy that could make big plays running or throwing. And Frank Costa, more of the prototype drop back thrower Miami fans have grown used to. Well, last year they really needed uh, a Ryan Collins, a guy that could do something on his own because the, they weren't able to run the football effectively and they were having a lot of breakdowns in the blocking scheme. But this year they're running the ball. They're giving Frank a lot more time. So, you know, it's, it's a situation where the the normal drop back quarterback is an asset. Pruitt's kick coming down to Dexter Dawson at the three. And Dawson derailed at the 18 yard line. Juan Russell got down low around the shoe tops of Dexter Dawson, a 16 yard return. Three and a half minutes to play in what has to be a long first half for Joe Dupree and the Georgia Southern offense still looking for their first first down of this game. And, you know, the question is at what point do the Georgia Southern offense abandon their normal option play? They need, because they've got to throw the football if they're expecting to get back in this ball game. First team defensive line back in for Miami. And Dupree has his man, Alfonso Harris, for the first down up at the 31-yard line. Carlos Jones and Earl Little on the coverage. But Alfonso Harris, the sophomore making just his second career start. He had two catches all of last year and two catches today. Well, in offense, they run the option a lot. You don't get many catches. And you know, it's good to see them able to throw the football and you know, just basically get something going. And they pick up their initial first down of the day. Dupree in a heap of trouble had to throw it short to Dexter Dawson. Warren Sapp and Kenny Holmes blasting Dupree just as he threw the football. Warren Sapp just did a, <laughs> an excellent job of just running through the block and he's in the backfield. Dupree never has a chance to set up. He's coming out and there's just so much pressure from Sapp and Holmes that you know, he's just trying to get rid of the football to avoid the long loss. Warren Sapp in the preseason was so dominant. They had to take him out of the inner squad scrimmages for the offense to get anything done. He's a disruptor. I really feel that he is the best defensive lineman in college football today. Second and ten. This is Marlo Worthen on the pitch back. Nice burst for Worthen up to the 42-yard line, and that should be good enough for a first down for Georgia Southern. Earl Little was safety from North Miami Beach on the stop. Little going to be a good one. He suffered a knee injury and arthroscopic surgery in the preseason, but he'll be the starter before long here at Miami at the free safety spot. Yeah, he, he's young, but he's one of the, the favorites to eventually come in and win a starting job. You know, Georgia Southern was finally able to turn the corner. They've been trying to run the option, run the option, and you know, that happened simply because the linebacker, outside linebacker, Rohan Marley, slipped and fell. On first and ten, Dupree goes down. Corwin 
Francis with the sack back at the 35-yard line. Loss of seven. The fifth-year senior out of LaPorte, Texas, Corwin Francis. There you see the speed of the linebacking core. Corwin Francis came on a loop as he went outside of Kenny Holmes here. He goes all the way around, avoids the block, and he comes free on Dupree. Here's another look. <laughs> you know, Dupree getting to know Corwin Francis up close and personal. He's the steady veteran of that Hurricane linebacking group. There's Rusty Medeiros, along with Warren Sapp, on the pull down of Roderick Russell. We are under two minutes left in this first half. A half dominated by the gang in orange. Sixth ranked Miami having their way with Georgia Southern as expected. It's 28 to nothing. Well, that, that last play there, Eric, was just trying to keep the, that Hurricane defense honest because when and where or why would you run at Warren Sapp and Rusty Medeiros? <laughs> Rusty Medeiros, a sixth-year senior. Now this is third and 16 for Georgia Southern. Roderick Russell stuck between the numbers by number 54, James Burgess, a sophomore linebacker from Homestead, Florida, snuffed it out. No game for Roderick Russell. Here's Burgess. Good young linebacker that uh, really beat Rohan Marley, who we talked about earlier in the telecast as uh, the great linebacker from... Uh, Homestead, I guess it is, that uh, Rohan Marley is from. His dad is Bob Marley, and, you know, he came in as the leading linebacker and lost his job in the spring. That James Burgess, a Michael Barrow protege out of Homestead High. Coming up at the half, Joe Rose will talk with former Miami Hurricane great Alonzo Highsmith and current athletic director Paul D. Matt and I will have the highlights and your first half stats. You know, talking about Alonzo Highsmith, who, who Joe will be interviewing at halftime, you tell me I'm one of the guys that were very uh, important in that Hurricane National Championship. You tell me one of the great backs in Hurricane history. Alonzo Highsmith was one of the best backs that I've ever seen play here in the Orange Bowl. And that's saying a lot because I've seen a lot of great starting with Berger Lawrence. I'm not talking just college. I'm talking about pro as well. Well, you had some great days with the Miami Dolphins here at the Orange Bowl. Dolphins opening up this weekend with the rest of the National Football League at the break here. Uh, your thoughts on what may be ahead this year for your old team, the Miami Dolphins? Well, I, I think getting Dan Marino back, anytime you can get Dan Marino back and healthy, you know, he, he hurt his Achilles, but there's nothing wrong with his arm. Uh, matter of fact, I think having the year off last year made it a little stronger. You know, they're stumbling around getting to know each other all over again, but I look for him to, you know, get back into the playoffs and challenge for the Super Bowl. And at 15 left in the second quarter here. Hurricanes leading it by four touchdowns. And Eric Smith sends this one inside the 35 out of bounds at the 33. Not one of Smith's better punts today, just 28 yards. Hurricanes will take it over their own 33, first and 10. And Ryan Collins stays in at quarterback. Eric Smith only kicking for 28 yards. I, I, I must believe he's tired. Uh, this might be a, he might go for a record today. If this Hurricane defense continue to play the way they are, uh, he might be up in the 15, 16, 17 punt range today. Ryan Collins out of the shotgun. And that one is caught by Chris Jones. At the 38-yard line, pickup of five, and the Hurricanes in their hurry-up offense. 53 seconds and counting left in the second quarter. Second down and five. Plenty of time for Collins. First down catch for Chris Jones up at the Miami 44-yard line. That's picked up of six, but now just 36 seconds to play in the first half. I, I'm more impressed every time I see Collins with how much patience he has in the pocket. You know, there, the Georgia Southern defense sitting back playing zone. Everybody's covered. He waited. He waited until, he, until one of his receivers came open and then found him. We've always enjoyed, yes, his, his feel for the game. Ian Collins throwing it incomplete to stop the clock with 33 seconds left. Collins was a 
Excellent high school basketball players, a point guard for Hialeah Miami Lakes, always been a winner. They said he would never be able to play quarterback at Miami, and Collins always insisted he could. That just goes to show you what happened. If you've got confidence in yourself, you've got confidence in the people that you're working with and playing for, that if you show them that you're capable, that they'll give you that opportunity. And you know, it's a good ending for a guy like uh, Ryan Collins, who didn't give up on himself. He's in his junior year, and he has a second and 10 here. Plenty of time for Collins, and that one's picked off by Scott Davis. Davis looking for some blocks, gets one, and is finally run out at the 41-yard line. Now, A.C. Tellison was running open in the middle of that Georgia Southern defense, but the Collins throw was short, and Davis picked it. That was just a bad throw by Ryan Collins. He tried to force it in. Uh, Scott Davis got a good drop in the coverage. As long as the quarterback is still sitting back there, he's dropping and got good vision. Just did a good job of playing the football, coming up with the INT. 19-yard return for Scott Davis, the senior from Powder Springs, Georgia. Here you see Ryan Collins is showing some poise, but here he, he tries to force it in. He had a man open, but there was a little room to fit it in, and you, know, you just can't make that throw at a time like this. That's Miami's third turnover of the first half. Has not cost them to this point. And Dupree, with a heat on from Kennard Lang, came up short, trying to get it to Alfonso Harris. Well, if Joe Dupree has improved as a thrower, we have not yet seen it. Well, I, I find it very difficult for him to improve his stats when you know he's rolling right, he's rolling left, and here's a right-handed thrower that's rolling to the left with pressure and trying. It's impossible for him to square shows and throw the football. That's the time left in the first half. Joe Dupree again in trouble and again goes down. Six now. Kennard Lang, well, he's a fierce pass rusher, and he's made a couple of plays already today. You look at Kenny Holmes, you look at Rusty Medeiros, and then here you get Lang that comes off the bench. That, you know, you can't get outside of it because he's got great speed. He plays off the blocker real well and you know, applies pressure to the quarterback. You know, what are you going to do if you're Joe Dupree? Your running game's not going. You've got nowhere to set and throw the football. This is going to be a long day. Well, Georgia Southern will be looking forward to getting back to the regular portion of their schedule next week at home against West Georgia. And then on September 17th, a huge game for these Eagles. They'll go against Marshall, a Southern Conference opponent, and a team ranked number two, just one spot ahead of Georgia Southern. So two big weeks coming up for the Eagles after today. And that's why a game like this is so important, because you come in, you're, you're getting drilled by a better football team, but if you hang in there knowing that all you want to do is get better, it's going to help you when you go up against uh, people in your same conference. Nat Dennis Erickson made a couple of points during the week. He said, one, we want to play well and set a tone on opening day, but we also want to improve. He said last year we did not get better as the season advanced. Well, I think that's the key in, in college football. Each week you want to get better because at the end of the year, for you to win it all, you've got to be playing the best football in the country. 28-0 Miami, six seconds left here in the first half. And Dupree will try again. And again, in a big heap of trouble. Incomplete and a roughing the passer, perhaps. Kenny Holmes. That's an intentional grounding on Joe Dupree. And that will end the first half. Now the Hurricane defense. Very impressive to our first half. Miami to the halftime dressing room, leading 28 to nothing. Two touchdown runs by James Stewart. 31 yards and 16 yards. A five-yard Larry Jones touchdown and an 11-yard hookup between Ryan Collins and Chris Jones. Not a bad first half for Miami now. Yeah, Miami came out and played well defensively. Offensively, they were able to run the football. Special teams, they made some big plays, but you know, they had a lot of mistakes on special teams, and they, and they can't afford to do that against good football teams. They're much better than Georgia Southern, so they could get away with it today, and that's why they're leading 28 to nothing and a half. Well, Joe, 
And a look at your halftime numbers brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. When you're thirsty, it's got to be Gatorade. Look at the defensive numbers. 11 yards in the negative category for Georgia Southern. Miami's racked up 265 yards of offense. The three turnovers, bit of a problem for the Hurricanes. But they have owned the first half. 14 first downs to two. Checking the individual numbers, James Stewart, 12 carries, 108 yards. Larry Jones, 41 yards in six carries. Frank Costa went four for 10 for 73 yards. Collins was three for five, 23 yards. He threw one touchdown and was intercepted once. With Joe Rose, Nat Moore, and our Sunshine crew, Eric Reed, welcoming you back as we ready second for the second half kickoff. Dan Pruitt will kick it to either Chris Wright or Dexter Dawson. And number 85, Dexter Dawson. Into the shadows of the end zone. And Dawson watches it sail out of bounds. The kickoff is out of bounds. At that first half for Miami's offensive line, something the Hurricanes can really build on. That was a question mark for this football team coming into the 94 campaign. Last year, they were extremely suspect. They weren't able to run the football. They were having so problems protecting the quarterback. And this year, when you, when you can run the football, it makes the pass protection a little bit easier for those guys. Joe Dupree getting set. For Georgia Southern, completing just one for six in the first half. He was held a negative 37 yards rushing and add some negative numbers to that. Orange Sapp and Kenny Holmes sneaking in and stopping Dupree for a loss of two. That was another play action pass off the option where Kenny Holmes made Dupree pull the ball down and once he pulled it down, Warren Sapp was there for the sack. Got to be second down and 13 for a helpless Georgia Southern offense. They go with Tyrone Stevens as the fullback. Marlo Worthen, Chris Wright, the slot back. And this is Worthen. Rohan Marley tripped him up. And Worthen gets back to the line of scrimmage. Now we see the depth of Miami's linebacking core. James Burgess, the starter. Marley comes off the bench, and he can spark a defense. Linebacking crew goes about six or eight deep for Miami. And if you ever go out and watch the scout team practice, you look at the linebackers that they've got on the red on the scout team that uh, might be just as good. Now there's a freshman who may see some playing time later in the year, Jeffrey Taylor. On third and 13. His knee was touching at the 36, and penalty markers down. Taken by Marlo Wertha. A hold on Georgia Southern. They have been able to do next to nothing against this Miami defense. Hurricanes will decline and get it back via the punt. Well, Georgia Southern tried a little trickery there, Eric, where they tried to roll out right and then run a screen pass back to the left. And uh, why would you hold on a screen pass? You know, you're supposed to let them in. Fourth down. Well, on both sides of the line of scrimmage, Georgia Southern totally outmatched today, as you might expect. Well, it's kind of tough to match up with a hurricane offensive line or defensive line that outweigh you 20 to 30 pounds across the line. And I expect to see it take even a greater toll in the third and fourth quarter. Smith's punt. German will let it bounce. And Georgia Southern gets pretty good roll. Down to the Miami 15-yard line. That's a 53-yard punt for Eric Smith. Well, Eric Smith has been the Eagles' best offense all day. Uh, you know, his punting has gotten them out of holes and uh, put the Hurricanes back. But uh, defensively, they still haven't been able to stop that Hurricane uh, offense. That's the offensive line for Miami, anchored by the two tackles. 311-pound Zev Lomelski and 330-pound Ricky Perry on the other side. And Casey Jones, a warrior at center. Stewart, the long setback. 
straight ahead to the 20-yard line, pick up a four or five for Miami. James Stewart. Well, James Stewart is coming through the middle, and Casey Jones is just doing a good job of clearing his guy out of there because every time he comes through there, no one puts a hand on him until he's five or six yards downfield. James Stewart had just two 100-yard rushing days last year against Georgia Southern and against Rutgers. I think the century mark for Mr. Stewart is going to come on a more regular basis this year. Second and six. Jamie German has the catch and the first down. Lunging over the 25 to the 27-yard line. First catch today for Jamie German. German is stopped by Davis. Good little turnout, you know, something to, to help develop uh, Frank's confidence here. He hits uh, Jamie German, and what Jamie does, just a little little six-yard route. He goes down, turns around, catches the ball in his hands. Good job of catching the ball in his hands. Locates the defender, makes one miss, and dives for the first down. Scott Davis on the stop after Francis Williams let German roll by. James Stewart. That man is hard to bring down. In the Georgia Southern Territory at the 49-yard line, 23 more yards for Stewart. James, James Stewart reminds me of a guy that I had the pleasure of playing with that wore number 39. And once he's in the secondary, he just runs over people. Here you see, once again, linebackers, no chance. Defensive backs, no chance. I mean, even there, he's still running away. If he doesn't lose control of the football, he might have picked up another 10 yards. James Stewart in the Larry Zonka mold. From the Miami 49-yard line, first down. Pasta for his tight end, Saeed Tucker, sliding in at the 28-yard line. Tucker coming off knee surgery, picking up 22 yards down the middle. There, Frank Costa showed you the touch that he was lacking last year. You know, he tried to gun everything in. There, he lobbed the ball over Michael LeBlanc's arm to get it in to seal Tucker for the first down. Good throw and catch. Tucker, a junior out of Oklahoma City. He's a good one. Hurricanes have out first down Georgia Southern today, 16 to 2. Side. And he's brought down at the 23. Five yard gain for James brought Stewart. Down by Williams and Thomas. Francis Williams, Edward Thomas bringing down Stewart. I'll tell you, even though James Stewart picked up five yards here, this is the first real bad decision I see him making here where he's trying to run to the sideline. They got him going east and west, and that negates all of that strength that he has when he's going north and south. 15 carries, a buck 39, 139 yards for Stewart. And his number called again. Near the first down inside the Georgia Southern 20. Anthony Battle, number 45, able to rope down Stewart. You don't stop James Stewart, though. Now, once he gets his shoulders squared to the to the end zone, it's hard to bring him down without him falling forward for two or three yards. Third and one as the Hurricane offense moves into the shadows here at the Orange Bowl. 9.50 left third quarter, 28-0 Hurricanes. And Danielle Ferguson in as the lone setback. Costa keeps it and moves the sticks. Frank Costa on the quarterback keeper. First down, Miami. Miami's opening drive of the ball game netted them a touchdown. And their opening drive here in the second half also looking good. Quarterback sneak is another indication of how Coach Erickson feels about his offensive line, where normally we don't see that. You know, they would be throwing for the first down or giving it to the fullback coming through, but, you know, they just got so much confidence in that offensive line that they can try anything today. Canes have a huge offensive front. Could be a strength this year. Battle had help 
from Rob Stockton to bring him down. But a 14-yard hookup from Frank Costa to the electrifying Jamie German. Jamie German is just great to watch. You know, he catches a little slant pattern across. It's like a little screen, and then he turns it upfield, and he has no concern for his body. As you see, watch him catch this ball, turns upfield. There's four or five defenders here, and he just tries to split them, just hurdles his body forward. Ninth play of the drive for Miami. First and goal from the Georgia Southern Five. Daniel Ferguson. Off right tackle, down to the two. Rob Stockton and Charlie Burt in on the stop. He stopped by Carol and Burt, number 57, a senior out of Winter Haven, Florida, and a two-year starter at Georgia Southern. 8-18 to play in the third. Hurricanes looking for their fifth touchdown today and going with two backs. Here's Stewart, and he has his third touchdown of the day. Touchdown Miami. James Stewart is just a low to handle when he comes through there. He's low, he's got his feet pumping, and there's just no way to bring him down without him falling forward, crossing the goal line. Three rushing touchdowns on the best day of James Stewart's career, opening day in 94. Southern nothing. We'll be right back after this from Coors Light. Reach for Coors Light, the silver bullet, and keep on moving. Here we see James Stewart coming over the middle as you see Tyrell Green and Casey Jones clearing their guys out of there for their three-yard touchdown run. What a day for James Stewart. There's another angle at it as you see James Stewart coming through. Alan Seminette, Tyrell Green. KC Jones all doing their job of clearing that middle. You see the drive, 10 carries, 84 yards. And the numbers on James Stewart? Well, a Miami running back could only dream about those numbers in the recent past. 17 carries, 145 yards, three touchdowns. Best day of the career for junior James Stewart. And more to come in the career of James Stewart. Again, it's Dawson and Wright. Dawson settles under it at the seven. Hard running Dexter Dawson shy of the 20 yard line. Dawson returns the kickoff. That's 35 to nothing Miami. How do you feel so far about opening day for the Hurricanes? I think they're making a good showing. They're showing everybody that uh, even though they're playing a division uh, AA school, one double A school that uh, they're back and, and they're going to play with a lot of emotion and aggress uh, aggressively this year. Dexter Dawson went limping out. Joe Dupree checking back. You have you have to think that uh, Coach Stahl will stick with his offense because they're not concerned about this game. They want to get ready for the upcoming games when they play against people that they're in direct competition with. And as you can see, they're still running the fullback. You know, they're not going back, abandoning their offense and throwing the football. Roderick Russell brought down by both James Burgess and Rohan Marley. Burgess now playing the middle linebacker spot. He came to Miami as a middle backer, moved him to the outside this year, but he can play both spots. It's good to have the flexibility of a guy like James Burgess because you've got so many talented linebackers that when you can play everywhere, it gives you a little bit more opportunity to play. Burgess loves the action in the middle. It's all hitting inside. Second down, seven. Here comes the option. Dupree on the keep. Nice run by Joe Dupree. He gets to the 27. Pick up of four. It'll be third and two. Again, Burgess and Marley on the stop. There's Rohan, number two. They call him the rat. He'll jump up and bite you. 
I tell you, you know, to see a guy that small playing outside linebacker and will hit you with the force that Rohan hits with, it's unbelievable that he can get that job done so easily. He's a five foot eight, 205 pound powder keg. Hurricanes top tackler a year ago. On third and two, nothing doing for the Georgia Southern fullback, Roderick Russell. Kenny Holmes, like a redwood, fell right on top of him. Again, Georgia Southern forced to punt. The Eagles held the two first downs all day. 6.20 remaining in the third. 35-0, Miami out in front. Fourth down at two. Do you think that uh, at some point through this ball game, Eric, that Coach Stowers would... Uh, eventually abandon the off the offense or will you think he's going to stick with what 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 got him here and you know, what's been good for their for their football team throughout the years and then i think they're an option team and this is what they do and that's all we'll probably see but i was expecting to see their backup quarterback redshirt freshman kenny robinson get some play time and he may well see some action later on in the second half but you know, for a team that's looking to, to improve on throwing the football, this would be an ideal time to work on that. 49-yard punt, first down Miami with a 35 to nothing lead. Beautiful end zone look at Miami's Orange Bowl with 538 left in the third. Easy time of it for Miami today. Well, Joe Rose loves to stir it up. What do you got cooking, Joe? Eric, I want to let everybody know Rusty Medeiros will not be back in the game, not because of injury. He's healthy, but they're going to start to give some other guys a chance to play. Look for some of the starters to now start to go out of the game. But one thing's for sure, talking to some of the senior players, same type of game style will be played. Things won't change there. Back up to you, Eric, and Nat. Thanks, Joe. Hurricanes looking after today, next Saturday at Arizona State before returning home September 24th to take on the Washington Huskies. We'll be back with you on October 1st when Miami travels to New Jersey to take on Rutgers. Frank Costa still at quarterback. He's got Jermaine Chambers and Marcus Wimberly as his receivers. Daniel Ferguson, the lone setback from the 23. Costa has Trent Jones. Jones to the Georgia Southern 46. Well, they love Trent Jones here in Miami, the redshirt freshman from Palmetto High School in Miami. He's made an impact, and that's his first grab of his career. Here we see Frank Costa go back. But I think the key here is Frank does a good job of getting the ball there, but Trent Jones finds the open seam in the zone and then does a good job of running with the football after the catch. 30-yard pickup, first down Miami. This is Ferguson straight up the middle. Nice cut back for Danielle Ferguson. It's a guy that would go east and west, but... Danielle Ferguson proud to be a north-south runner here in his redshirt sophomore year. Came through the middle unmolested, made a little dip as he was going to go out to his left and then went right up the middle. Good, tough running by Danielle Ferguson. 18-yard pickup for Ferguson, who had his season cut short down to three games last year with injuries. He gets his sophomore year back. Tony Gator in the slot on first and ten. Ferguson, and he runs right in the Michael Morris, gets to the 24-yard line. A four-yard pickup for Danielle. Morris on the tackle, second down. Held the six. maturation process. Ferguson coming out of high school where he could cut back, go either way. He realized as a college runner, you've got to hit the hole and just head straight ahead. As as, as you see, Marley down there starting to celebrate early, but you know that's what you got to have out of uh, Danielle Ferguson is that you know you want him to take those tough four yards instead of always trying to hit the home run. Second down and six. On the delay, here comes Ferguson. Got Davis, the outside linebacker, ranging over to make the stop. Pickup of three, and that'll set up a third and three for Miami. Under four minutes to play in the third quarter now. Hurricanes comfortably in the lead, 35 to nothing. Third down and four. 
23. That's third down and four for Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes. to celebrate about. Made the catch and gallop to the end zone. That's what you want to see. You want to see the quarterback get the ball on the money, but then be, watch the receiver do something on his own to get into the end zone. Helping the quarterback out. Brad reacting to the penalty flag. The penalty. Dead ball. Against Miami. Unsportsmanlike. Celebration in the end zone. That's the end zone. to blame Trent Jones celebrating a bit after his first Miami touchdown. Well, the officials are trying to tone it down. You don't want to rub it in anybody's face, but uh, you know, here's a young man scores his first touchdown, and he's just happy. Good nails the point after, and the Hurricanes now leading it 42 to nothing after that five-play, 78-yard drive. Georgia Southern down 42 to zip as we take another look at the touchdown hopefully here. Um, you know, Frank, Frank Costa really needs to get some success here and here's a good job of just throwing the football out there. Trent Jones makes sure the catch avoids the tackle, get this, gets into the end zone. Good job of keeping his balance there. But you know, Frank is a guy that after suffering through last year, he needs to have some success today to go into the next ball game. This is just a good throw over the outstretched arms of the defender. Trent Jones staying with the reception, getting into the end zone. Well, Trent Jones had a very impressive preseason for Miami and an eye-opening drive for Trent Jones, the sophomore hurricane out of Miami Palmetto. He played in the same high school backfield as Dennis Erickson's son, Bryce. Frank Costa throwing his first touchdown pass of the day. And the Hurricanes in front, 42 to nothing. Eric Reed with Nat Moore and Joe Rose. Delighted to have you with us. We've seen the Hurricanes ring up 425 yards of offense and Georgia Southern negative three in terms of offense. Here's Dexter Dawson. He went off limping after the last return, but he looked okay sliding up to the 39. Dawson. You see the numbers on that last Miami touchdown drive. Trent Jones, get used to the name. He's a rising star for Miami. Trent Ridgely brought down the Eagle ball carrier. Well, we thought we might see the redshirt freshman, Kenny Robinson. He's out of Concord, North Carolina. And his coach, Tim Stowers, calls him a Ryan Collins type, a left-hander and a very good athlete. Stevens straight ahead of the 45 yard line, a gain of nearly six yards. Tackled by Harley and Short. Baraka Short in on the stop. We did not expect to see Short, who suffered a gunshot wound to his leg over the summer. I thought he was still a week or two away, but Short getting into the fray. Well, you see Miami starting to bring in the second and third team players, giving them a chance to play. And, you know, when you're having fun and everybody's mixing it up, Director Short said, hey, coach, how about me? Let me play a little bit. Two and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. There's a look at the right side end, Baraka Short. And penalty markers fly. Kenny Holmes, I believe, jumped off sides. But maybe he was drawn off, and that's the case. The illegal procedure on Georgia Southern. Now, this is what the Hurricanes wanted to do now. Set the tone in their opener and take care of business against this outmanned Division I AA school, and they've done so. 
When you've had a long offseason the way they have, after the embarrassment with Arizona, you can't wait to get back and play a game like Second this. Down, it's very important that you come out strong, you set the tone, and uh, you basically take charge and, and show the, your opponent that uh, they've got no chance of keeping you from winning, uh, breaking that streak. Man talking to Dennis Erickson on the Miami sideline was first-year defensive coordinator Greg McMacken. Here's Chris Wright, spun down by Twan Russell, but he may have got some face masks. Back at the 35, good play by Russell darting in. Twan Russell, a six foot two inch sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Miami for an illegal face mask. And it is a face mask infraction on Russell. Face mask against the defense, five yard penalty. Repeat, second down. There you see Teron Russell is an uh, inadvertent face mask, but uh, they've got to call it. And, uh, you know, he comes off, kicked his hands off late, but uh, the official caught him. You know, when you think about a, a wishbone football team, I, I, I keep thinking about this streak and thinking back to 1985, and I've, I've not seen a team effectively run the option against the Hurricane football team. And it, it has a lot to do with the kind of players they recruit that are big, strong, and fast that run from sideline to sideline. Hurricanes will see the option offense twice more this year against Virginia Tech and against Syracuse. Jones, number 37, brought down, loss of two. James Burgess, like a lightning rod, darting in to make the play. That hurricane defense is just swarming all over the place. Uh, Robinson pitches the ball with three people on his back, and by the time the pitch man gets the ball, get outside, there's three or four defenders out there on top of him. Just unbelievable defense. Here you see a couple of guys all putting a hit on him, and just as the, the back gets the ball, there's three guys around him. Burgess leading, that, leading the pack. Georgia Southern is 0 for 11 on third down. They have just two first downs all afternoon. Here's Robinson. Tried to pull the trigger, but did not. And goes down at the 42. Gain of just four, well shy of a Georgia Southern first down. We wind down here in quarter three as the Hurricanes head toward a record-setting 58th straight win here at the Orange Bowl. At six. Imagine wearing that costume with a temperature over 90 degrees on the Orange Bowl turf. While being demolished. Not a good day. Not a good day at all. Well, this home winning streak began October the 12th, 1985. Hurricanes hoping to add a 14th shutout in the 58 straight wins. Another beautiful punt for Smith. Gator gets out of the way. All downed at the 12 by Will Roberts, number 80, with six seconds to play. In the third, 44-yard punt for Smith. And a first down for Miami. Hurricanes coming with a couple of new players. Lamont Kane, Al Shipman, and Ryan Collins back at quarterback. And this going just as Dennis Erickson would have planned. Big day for his defense. Good performance by the offense and a chance to play a whole bunch of folks. Al Shipman with a 16-yard line. Pick up of three. Hurricane coaches love Al Shipman. He's the quickest of Miami's backs. Sophomore out of West Palm Beach. And that ends the third. We turn the page to the fourth quarter on opening day with the Hurricanes in a cakewalk. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the Back at the Orange Bowl, the Miami Hurricanes leading Georgia Southern 42 to nothing as we ready for the start of the fourth quarter. Eric Reed with Matt Moore, Joe Rose, and our Sunshine Network crew. 
Chip Singer producing today's game. Our director, John Luna. Another great day of work by this tireless Sunshine Network gang. Well, Miami heads into the fourth quarter playing lots of people. Brand new offensive line in the game along with new tight end Chris C. Jones. New receivers, Jermaine Chambers to the right. Marcus Wimberly to the left, and here comes Al Shipman. Shipman still on his feet, and look He's at him gone. go. He's gone. An 82-yard touchdown run for Al Shipman. That Eagles defense is just worn out at this time. But you know, you see Al Shipman, the little guy, breaking tackles. He breaks the tackle, and he's off to the races, and no one was going to catch him. Now, well, once he turned the corner, you knew nobody would. Like a speeding bullet, Al Shipman dashes 82 yards. They call him the Frog, and he leapfrogged into the end zone for his first Miami touchdown. The second smallest man on the Hurricane football team. <laughs> Actually, that's the second touchdown in the career for Shipman. The Pruitts had a busy day nailing point afters. The Hurricanes now leading it 49 to nothing. Well, if nothing else, the Hurricanes showing off their depth of talent here on opening day. And I would love to be in the locker room after this ball game, uh, after that great run there by Shipman. You know, James Stewart has had a great day, but I can bet you that uh, Al Shipman will walk up to James Stewart and say, take that, big boy. I can play this game, too. Well, Matt, we've seen all four Miami running backs strut their stuff. James Stewart, Larry Jones, Danielle Ferguson, and Al Shipman, four quality performers. Well, you know, the talk was how Coach Erickson was going to get all of these great talents the opportunity to play if he didn't go to the two-back offense. But here you see why he stays with the one-back offense. Shipman breaks a couple tackles there, a couple missed tackles, and then he's off to the races. And look at him pick him up and go. Georgia Southern's Andre Rogers, number 22. Got nothing but fumes from Al Shipman. Well, if, if I'm Rogers, at a certain point, I say it's, it's futile. There's no reason to chase him any longer because the gap is getting wider, as you see. Rogers out of the picture as Shipman just ran away from Georgia Southern. Miami's seventh touchdown today, the fifth coming on the ground. Two plays, 87 yards on the drive. And the Hurricanes have dominated this football game all the way. Chris Wright upended a 16-yard line. Teron Russell again making a big play on special teams. Coach Dave Arnold has got to be happy. The, the kickoff coverage has been fantastic today. They went down, they've thrown their bodies around with reckless abandon and made some big plays. Now Shipman is still collecting the accolades. They come your way when you make big plays. Robinson, the freshman quarterback for Georgia Southern. He gave it off to the fullback, Roderick Russell. Picked up a couple of yards near the 20. Hurricanes going with Marlon Barnes as one of their linebackers. Kevin Brinkworth in the middle. Antonio Coley on the outside. Second down, seven for the Eagles. Pick Jason Robinson. And Chris Wright could not handle the flip. Third and seven. Earl Little is... Uh... He's injured over on the sideline. Hopefully it's nothing uh, 
Earl Little, the transfer from Michigan. A heralded career at North Miami High School. Looked to be a starter this year, but had arthroscopic knee surgery in the preseason. Some say that Earl Little could be one of the best safeties to ever play at Miami. Well, they've had some good ones here, with the, but uh, he has all of the attributes to become a great safety, and it's a matter of how soon he, he uh, progresses where he doesn't make the mistakes where he come out of the middle. But here you see him coming up, and he's hit by his own man. Antonio Coley, number 47. Coley, a sophomore from Hialeah, Florida. Little's okay. He jogs off. With 13.53 left in the football game. Well, this one has been decided early. Hurricanes leading 49 to nothing. They led it 14 nothing after one. 28 zip at halftime. Robinson. Incomplete. But short of the first down to Alfonso Harris. Pickup of five. They needed seven. The completion is six yards. That's much better action as far as throwing the football because they bring him out on the roll, get him away from that traffic, and gives him a chance to throw the football. Unfortunate enough, he didn't get enough on it to get the first down, but it's a much better pass play than trying to run it off that option, uh, option pass. Eric Smith back to punt for Georgia Southern. That's Tony Gator. And hang time. And Gator makes the fair catch at the Miami 28. A 47 yard punt for Eric Smith. That's about the only thing that's gone well for Georgia Southern. The Hurricanes in front, 49 to nothing. For their 58th straight win at home, that's the record setter. Let's go down to another record setter, Joe Rose, with a special guest. Unfortunately, it wasn't me that set the records, but I am with the 1992 Heisman Trophy winner, Gino Toretta. And Gino, it's got to give you a great feeling to see this thing go to 58 after today, and you were a big part of it for two years. It is. You know, it's it's a credit to all the coaching staffs and all the teams involved, and uh, you know, I think a big part of it goes to the fans because they're the best in the country. As you were going through camp, was this in the back of your mind this day coming that you guys would break it part of your um tradition here oh definitely i mean you don't want to break the streak and i think that that's a big part of why why it keeps on going on because you don't want to be on the team that ends up losing that game to break the streak and uh hopefully it goes on for a lot more years i wanted to ask you this too a new attitude it looks like for this football season the team back together something we didn't see maybe last year well i think defensively they're playing real well you know it's probably one of the quickest defenses i've seen in a while and uh you know i think offensively they're coming back together and i think uh you know frank's taking charge charge of them and uh, you know I look forward to having a good season. All right thanks a lot Gino for joining. Thanks. All right back up to you guys. Thanks Joe. Danielle Ferguson on the catch and uh, loses a couple. Chad Dybert. Gino Toretta recently released by the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL. He hopes to hook on elsewhere. I was out in Minnesota earlier this year and uh, you know, Coach Green was really happy with Gino, but he was stuck with a dilemma. It was going to be impossible to keep four quarterbacks. They did it last year, but with the salary cap, it really hurt Gino this year as far as making that Minnesota team. Good look at Anthony Battle, outside linebacker for the Eagles. Second and a dozen. Nice catch. Chris C. Jones has the first down. Up to the Miami 49-yard line. Ryan Collins hit him with a perfect strike. Chris C. Jones. 23-yard pickup. Chris C. Jones, the third-string tight end. He's a redshirt freshman from Somerville, Tennessee. First down for Miami. Look at the time for Collins. Broken up nicely, though, by the strong safety, Rob Stockton, intended. as intended for Lamont Kane. I think they had a little mix up there. You ended up with two offenders, uh, two offensive players in the same area and uh, made it kind of tough to fit it in. Second down. Dangerous pass with so many people, so many defenders around the ball. 
54,058 here at the Orange Bowl today to witness a record-setting performance by Miami. Ready to ring up a 58th win in a row in this stadium. Second and 10. Here comes Daniel Ferguson. First down. Ferguson to the Georgia Southern 37-yard line. 15-yard gain for Daniel Ferguson. And Miami marching toward possibly an eighth touchdown today. An eighth touchdown, and uh, when is the last time that the Hurricanes rushed for five touchdowns in one ball game? Got to dig into the Miami record books for that one. Here we go, a little draw, show pass, and then here comes Danielle Ferguson. And this is what we're talking about, his ability to run north and south rather than to go east and west. In years past, he would have tried to get outside. Almost intercepted. A mix-up on the Ryan Collins throw, and Marco Bratham nearly had it. Now that's the thing about this Georgia Southern defense. You know, they're getting pummeled by the Hurricane offense, but the way they play their defense, they all got good vision on the football. This is just an overthrow, but the corner, Benham, almost comes off and picks it off because he's doing his job. He's doing as he's coached, keeping vision in the backfield. Second and ten for Ryan Collins. Ferguson, the lone setback. Gator and Todd Johnson to the top. Ferguson spinning to the 30. That's a seven-yard game for Danielle Ferguson. Just under 11 minutes to play in the opener. 49-0 Miami. Next up, at Arizona State for the Hurricanes. That's a Saturday away. Third and four for Collins and company. Overthrown intended for Lamont Kane. That'll bring up a fourth down and four. Dennis Erickson to go for it, and it looks like he will. Of course, Dennis is delighted with his coaching staff. New offensive coordinator in Rich Olson, new defensive coordinator in Greg McMacken, and they've had much to be happy about today. Drop to Ferguson, and he has the first down. To the 26-yard line, he moves the chains for Miami. That shows a lot of confidence in his offensive line and his running backs to have fourth and four and uh, run a draw for the first down. Andrew Rogers, who could not catch Al Shipman in the open field, made the stop on Ferguson. Well, the sun beginning to set on this warm afternoon in Miami. The hurricane still revved up. Georgia Southern with just two first downs on the day. Ferguson to the 21, a five-yard game. Canes going to surpass Alabama's long-standing record today with the 58th straight win at home. The interesting thing, Tim Stowers, the head coach of Georgia Southern, was at Bryant-Denny Stadium on the campus of Alabama in 1982, the day that Southern Miss ended Alabama's 57-game home winning streak. Stowers was an assistant coach at Auburn, and he was scouting the game. Ferguson had a knee touch at the 21. When I talked with Stowers about that experience of being at the game that Alabama's winning streak was stopped, he says he remembers it as the beginning of the end of the Bear Bryant era at Alabama. Well, it might have been the beginning of the end of Bear Bryant's era, but uh, that's not going to happen here today. You know, Dennis 
team came out and they were fired up and they took control early in the ball game and you know I, I expect to see them get into that 60 number before they even think about uh, having an opportunity to lose here well this will be number 58 59 will be Washington on September 24th the opportunity I should say for number 59 Ferguson turns the corner gets to the 13 that's a seven yard pickup of course a very interesting home game looming on October 8th the home winning streak will get a stern test when Bobby Bowden brings in the Florida State Seminoles a Saturday night tilt and that's a game that I think the Hurricanes are pointing toward you know last year they went up and lost to Tallahassee lost to Florida State in Tallahassee and uh, it'll be an opportunity to get back at him and uh, march on toward a possible chance at another national championship first and 10 Miami at the Georgia Southern 13 Danielle Ferguson dragging a tackler inside the 10 down to the eight yard line Edward Thomas grabbed Ferguson and hug on for the ride. Four yard pickup. They'll give you an idea about this winning streak to put it in perspective and nice looking numbers for Ferguson. Miami closing in on win number 58 in a row at home. The next best home winning streak in Division 1A is Texas A&M, and they've won 20 in a row. After that, Nebraska at 17, Florida State at 12. A long way to go to catch Miami. Ferguson again. Danielle Ferguson darting inside the five down to the three-yard line. He's really become a, a slashing runner inside uh, where in the years past he would always try and get to the outside, turn the corner, and rely on his speed. But now he's cutting back and he's staying low and you know, diving through there. And I think that's going to help him in later years to become a complete running back. Nat, all four of Miami's running backs have had their moments today. One of the deepest spots on one of the country's deepest football teams. Third down and two. Marcus Hunter makes the catch put out of the end zone. Just a good-looking incompletion for Miami. And that'll bring up a fourth down and two. That's called a quick takeoff and uh, you know, just a little too much air. You had him open, but uh, just let him a little too far. Hurricanes don't want to bother with a field goal. They're looking for an eighth touchdown on opening day. Ferguson has the first down, has the touchdown. Great second effort by Danielle Ferguson, and we've seen that from all four running backs today where that little extra effort to get it to the end zone for the touchdown. The eighth touchdown today for Miami, a fourth different Miami running back into the end zone. A showcase afternoon for Miami's ground game. Six minutes and 33 seconds left in an opening day for Miami fans to remember. Win number 58 in a row, one-sided, wouldn't you say? If you're going to set the record, this is the way you do it. You come out and you really take charge. You didn't win by a hope and a prayer. You came out and you were dominant the entire day. College football. College football season underway. So is the National Football League. And we invite you to join Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine, Monday, September 5th. Your guests, Jeff Cross and Keith Sims. They'll join Kerry Ross in studio. Monday night, Miami Dolphins Magazine, here on Sunshine Network. With Joe Rose, Nat Moore, I'm Eric Reed. Glad to have you with us. The Hurricanes steaming on opening day, 56 to nothing, their lead. And to give you an idea how bad it's gone for Georgia Southern, they have more punts than rushing yardage. 11 punts, negative six yards on the ground. 
as we said earlier, the punt has been their offense for today, and uh, it's been able to keep the game from getting even worse out of hand. It can only get better from here for Georgia Southern as they get back to the 1AA level. Dexter Dawson dancing along the sideline and thrown out at the 23-yard line. Here's another look at the touchdowns. You see Ryan Collins here taking the snap, handing off to Danielle Ferguson. But here, watch the extra effort. You know, he's stopped at the point. He's still fighting. He's fighting. He's duck, jumping on one leg to get into the end zone. And you know, that's what it takes. You know, touchdown. Sometimes you got to work a little harder. He just runs over the safety, stays on one leg, and refuses to go down. Rob Stockton, number 14, with strong safety, has done all he can, but it has not been enough. The fullback dives ahead for a yard. Penalty markers down. With 6.18 to play in the game, there's the scoring drive for Miami. Their eighth touchdown today. Fourth different running back going over. And Danielle Ferguson has had quite an afternoon. 15 carries, 87 yards. I'll tell you what's really impressive in that stat there is the time of possession. Six minutes and 31 seconds. Offside. Well, that's what you want to have Defense. as a good football team. Play first down. Be able to control the football. And it'd be interesting to find out what the Hurricanes' uh, dominance as far as controlling the football has been today. Tim Stowers says we have a good football team. You wouldn't know it today, but that's the difference between 1A and 1AA. Here's Kenny Robinson on first and five. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Booker Pickett, Tremaine Mack, and Jeffrey Taylor all in on the stop. One tangible difference between the two divisions. Division 1A, you give out 85 scholarships. Division 1AA, you are limited to 65. All right, no, normally, your first team players are, are, are somewhere of the same caliber, but as you start to develop depth, it's a little bit tougher to stay and play with those Division 1A schools because they just keep coming at you. Second and five. Redshirt freshman Kenny Robinson with time left, five and a half minutes on the flip back end around. Look at Dexter Dawson go. Penalty marker down as Dawson races with Antonio Coley. And Coley catches up to him and knocks it out of bounds. At the one-yard line. But a penalty marker back at the Georgia Southern 42. Big playmaker for Georgia Southern, Dexter Dawson, giving you an example of his skills. But a hold will bring it back. Yeah, that, that hurts. You know, you've been struggling all day. You've been pushed around the field, and you finally come with a little trickery, and you get called for holding to bring a big play back where it's the first spark of offense. Well, the Hurricane defense had their shutout hopes flash before them. On Dawson's run, a 67-yard end around gets called back. The reason that the Georgia Southern is able to do that and run that play and the reverse is so successful is that Miami is in such quick pursuit that anywhere the ball go, everybody's flooring to the ball and no one's staying home for containment. And there they, they lost containment and Dawson was off to the races. With the win today, Dennis Erickson's record as the coach of the Canes will go to 54 and 7. He remains unblemished at home, 32 and 0. Second down. He has done a phenomenal job coming in here, replacing Jimmy Johnson and just keeping everything moving in the right direction. And granted, they were nine and three last year, but you know, with most programs, that's a heck of a season, and you know, they're going to get better this year. Second and one for the Eagles. And Roderick Russell has the first down, rumbles to the 41. Well, football fans watching today's game should not let the quality of today's opponent influence their thoughts on this winning streak. In Miami's 58-game tear, four times they have beaten the nation's top-ranked team. 17 of those wins have come against teams in the top 25. Four different times in the streak, they've beaten Florida State. Three times it's been Notre Dame. They've taken on all comers. Will Roberts on the end around gets to midfield. Run out of bounds. Will Roberts. 
Roberts is running about. Eugene Ridgely making the tackle. Ridgely, a redshirt freshman from Marrero, Louisiana. The opening day has been a breeze for Miami today. This is the kind of game you want to open up with, uh, you know, get your feet wet and work out all the kinks. We saw some silly penalties early in the ball game, but you know, hopefully they'll get all that uh, worked out. They go back and look at the films, and th they should be get better. Roderick Russell breaks free and is finally bumped down by Tremaine Mack at the Miami 33-yard line. That's a 16-yard run for Roderick Russell, a redshirt freshman from Opelika, Alabama. Now you're starting to see the Georgia Southern football team move the ball up the middle with the fullback because that's the first read. They're leaving it in there, but they're going against Miami's second and third team defense. Matter of fact, it's the third team linebackers, and they're having some success. Freshman Jeffrey Taylor is the middle linebacker. Marlon Barnes and Antonio Coley on the outside. The end around. And brought down by Marlon Barnes at the 45-yard line. Corey Joyner. Joyner, a 5'9 freshman from Albany, Georgia, never had a chance. Penalty flagged down, a loss of 13. Unsportsmanlike against Miami. With 4-12 left in the football game, and the Hurricanes in front, 56 to nothing. Only thing in doubt, can the Canes keep the shutout? Well, it's going to be a little tough, you know, because uh, the Eagles are starting to move the football. But here you see Barnes coming, but Booker Pickett makes the, make the play because he stays at home. He, that ball, he keeps his containment, and then Barnes is able to come in and finish him off. Against the defense. Hail the crowd getting into it here in the final five minutes. James Burgess is checked back in as an outside linebacker. On second down and seven. The fullback Russell struggles for about three. Russell. Antonio Coley at the bottom of the pile. Jeffrey and Taylor. Jeffrey Taylor also credited with an assist. They like what they see out of Roderick Russell at Georgia Southern. He could supplant senior Tyrone Stevens as the starting fullback before very long. Yeah, they had a pretty heated battle this spring for the uh, position, and Stevens won out in the end, uh, and I think it was just his experience and leadership. And a three and a half minutes to play in the game, a third down and five for Georgia Southern. Michael Jones with a catch and stop at the Miami five-yard line. A 22-yard pickup as Kenny Robinson hit the sophomore slot back Michael Jones. And now the shutout is truly in jeopardy. It's in jeopardy, but uh, we've got Michael Jones down, and hopefully it's nothing serious. We've got two Eagle oh. football players down. The two players that collided. Jones was actually brought down by his own man. Nat going. We'll talk more about this amazing Miami winning streak at the Orange Bowl when we return to Miami, Florida, right after this with the Canes in cruise control. Miami in front by the tall score of 56 to nothing. Let's go back downstairs where Joe Rose is hanging around. Eric, the one nice thing about a 56 nothing game is everybody gets a chance to play. The morale on the sidelines has just been great. The starters stand up and watch the second and third teamers get a chance to play. This is great for team morale as they get ready for the Arizona State game. Back up to you, Eric. And the Arizona State game next Saturday on the road for the Canes as they go west. Numbers from the streak. Average score through the winning streak, 36 to 8 for Miami. Matter of fact, Nat, you were involved with the closest call the Hurricanes had during this winning streak. September 26, 1992, Hurricanes beat Arizona 8-7 to when Steve McLaughlin's field goal from 51 yards with three seconds to go just missed. Well, at that point, everybody thought the Hurricanes were not for real, but, you know, Arizona has become a good football team since then. You know, they've got one of the best defenses in college football as well. Well, they had a great win against Georgia Tech the other night. Roderick Russell spinning to the three. 
With three minutes left in the football game, Georgia Southern wants some pride points here. They'd like to punch it in. Well, that's what it's all about, uh, Joe. Ending on a, on a good note, being able to punch the ball in. And, you know, you, you, you've got to find some positive when you go back and you look at this ball game that'll take you into the next game. And if nothing else, the ability to move the football down the field at this point in the ball game when the Hurricanes are still trying to stop them is a positive for them. Now, if they're able to get it in, it's a big plus. The University of Havana not able to get much done back in 1928. On the flip to Will Roberts. Brought down by Tremaine Mack. Standout play for the redshirt freshman from Tyler, Texas. He saved the touchdown. Good open field tackle by Mack, but uh, that just goes to show you what we have been hopping on the whole ball game. It's tough to run sideline to sideline against these Hurricanes because of their speed. So they look like he's got the corner turn as you see the good block out front, but as you see Mack closes in, there's just no way he's going to allow him to get into the end zone. Talking about pride, that's when it becomes a pride thing. Did you let your man get into the end zone? Bill Roberts out of Pensacola, Florida, thought he saw the flag, but he was brought down by Mack. And Kenny Robinson calls timeout on third down and goal from the three with a minute 41 left. Well, Tim Stowers, Georgia Southern Eagles, would like a score before they head home to Statesboro, Georgia. Minute 41 left in the fourth quarter here at the Orange Bowl. Hurricanes in front, 56-0, but they're out of their seats, hoping to spur on the defense to hold on to the shutout. Football continues here on Sunshine Network. Southwest Conference action. Tulane against the Owls of Rice next Saturday at 1 p.m. Eric Reed with Nat Moore and Joe Rose enjoying the magic of Miami's Orange Bowl. Here's where the off of the fans become a big boost down in this closed end zone. Makes will make it tough for them to get the snap count off. Eric Russell, the fullback, Chris Wright in motion. Quarterback John Robinson goes down at the five. Denny Fortney, number 99. Also in on the stop was Jay Johnson. That's fourth down and goal from the six. A minute 20 left in the game, and Georgia Southern calls another timeout. As the Eagles call time. Now let's take a look at what's in front for Miami. At Arizona State next Saturday, you see the next game at home against Washington. We'll have the Rutgers contest for you. Florida State in a primetime game, 7.30 p.m. on October 8th. And at Morgantown on October 22nd. Some tough games ahead. They've got uh, three or four tough games back to back, but uh, you know the, the key to success is playing them one at a time. Now well, here in Miami, the Orange Bowl has been talked about quite a bit recently. This stadium, uh, more and more things going to Joe Robbie Stadium. Matter of fact, the Orange Bowl game on New Year's Day could likely be switched to Joe Robbie, but this ballpark has been so very good to this University of Miami program. It's got a lot of history, a lot of tradition, and uh, you know, it's a kind of stadium where you can make a lot of noise. Everything echoes. You know? It really helps the uh, home field team. Well, the ghosts of the Orange Bowl stirring now as the Hurricanes close in on their record-setting 58th straight win here. And now they'd like to shut down Georgia Southern's best scoring bit of the day. Fourth and goal. The shutout lives. Football. That's what you. That's all you could say. You know, when their backs against the wall, you see that hurricane defense come up strong. Kennard Lang, big number 96, helped bash the play up, and Miami will chalk up shutout number 14 in consecutive win number 58 at home. 
this is what you call a total team victory. Everybody played, everybody pitched in and did their job. And you know, when they celebrate setting this record, they've all got something to celebrate today. Third quarterback of the day for Miami, the freshman Ryan Clement out of Colorado. He won the number three quarterback job this year. Now shipping straight ahead for good yardage. To the 37, 14-yard gain for Shipman, who scored on an 82-yard touchdown run early in this quarter. Well, just to count down now, a minute three left on opening day. Well, James Stewart could be in trouble if Al Shipman get two more carries like that. He, he could surpass him as the leading rusher today. Well, Shipman, Ferguson, and Stewart have all had banner opening days. Ryan Clement beat out fellow freshman Scott Covington and Chris Walsh to win the number three quarterback job. They'll get him some playing time as the year goes by and uh, also serves to separate those two talented freshmen in class. And Covington will be a redshirt freshman next year while Clement will move on to his sophomore season. And, and that's a big advantage. And I think that's the reason that Coach Erickson want to play both quarterbacks, both Costa and, and, and uh, because next year it's Collins' turn, and then you've got two good young quarterbacks that will be taking the helm. Well, the frog Al Shipman numbers that leap out at you. Four carries over 100 yards. And here comes Mr. Shipman again. There he goes. And look out if he turns the corner. Simply ran out of room. Al Shipman. That's what speed will do. You can take a bad play, reverse your field, stop, reverse your field again. And the celebration has started. That ends the football game. The celebration begins. Nobody's done it better at home. 58 wins in a row at the Orange Bowl. An NCAA record for the Miami Hurricanes. And they do it as convincingly as you possibly could do today. 56 to nothing. Dennis Erickson gang prevails. Joe Rose will get a chance to talk with Dennis Erickson after the conversation at midfield with Tim Stowers. El Banner Day for UM's defense and the ground game. Number 58 for Miami. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Thanks, Eric. We're with Dennis Erickson. Coach, congratulations. Number 58, it's over. Yeah, it is, Joe, and obviously that's a great accomplishment that's been accomplished by a lot of uh, Hurricane football players and teams over the year, and it's just uh, nice to get it over with and get on with next week. Coach, before the game, you were as emotional as any of your players running around a little fired up before the emotion was back in your team against Georgia Southern. Well, uh, the most is going to be in our team the rest of the year. We can't wait to go to next week. Uh, this is an opportunity, and uh, you know, we'll just find out next week on the road, and uh, I'm excited about this football team. They're fun to be around. And they're really together, and we just we go to Phoenix, which is kind of a tough place for us last time we were there. Defensively, you can't play much better than that, can you? No, we're an outstanding defensive team. We played a lot of guys, Joe. I mean, we played everybody on the football team, and they all contributed and all played pretty well. Morale-wise, as you said, getting everybody a chance to, uh, a chance to play, and the starters backing up the second and third guys all fired up today. Well, you know, that, that, uh, that deal at the end was really important for our young people to keep them out of the end zone. They were all freshmen and sophomores and they're in the future of our football team and you know everybody was excited about what they did so uh, it's just a great win get it over win win number 58 and get to Arizona State good luck to you next week coach we'll see you thanks Joe that's coach Dennis Erickson back up to Eric and Nat Moore nice job Joe Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes they are a focused serious group this year a convincing win on opening day 56 to nothing Dave